playing something? Are there people in my house? Are someone watching this? What's happening? What's happening? I don't know, but we're going to be playing a really adorable game. Oh, yeah. I like adorable things. You do? You should oh, go yeah. on at length about the adorable things that you like. I'm going to go on at length about the adorable things I like while Tim handles other problems. Other problems. Welcome to Engadget Playdate on October 16th, 2015, where we're going to be playing Yoshi's Woolly World. Which is uh, the much, the much, much cuter looking cousin to uh, to what was it called? Kirby's uh, Epic Yarn. This isn't an epic game. It's just a super, super cute game, and that's all you need. That's all you need, my friends. Uh, we'll be playing this until what is it? Until 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time and six, seven, eight, nine. Tim, eight, what's, what, eight, eight p.m. Eight p.m. in the correct time, time zone. Zones. Eight p.m. in know. the correct time zone. No, no, in in the time zone of jerks. Maybe that. Time zone of jerks. Uh, and we are going to be starting in just a minute. Tim, did you did you solve your technical issue? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. So everybody, uh, welcome. Like Sean said, to engage a play date. We're playing. Sean, what? I I announced it. Kirby's oh, I'm I mean, not Kirby's again. Gosh. Yoshi's Woolly World, the spiritual successor to Kirby's Epic Yarn. Uh, and instead of yarn, it's just, you know, it's it's a whole world of fabrics instead of just a, 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 a string of yarn. I'm actually really excited for the visuals of this game. A little sad that it's Tim behind the controller this week instead of me. But it's okay. What I like about this game already is that unlike its spiritual prequel, is that the, the right way to say this? I don't know. Something like that. I have direct control over Yoshi. Unlike the last Kirby game where you used a... And Yarn, you didn't control Kirby directly? No, you had to... What you did is you made you made paths for him to, to float on and stuff. No, that was a different game. Oh. No, you got direct control of him in, uh, in Epic Yarn. You're thinking of um, the Kirby. Canvas Curse or whatever. Yeah, I bought it earlier this year and then... I yeah, that's, like... that's a Wii U game. Epic Yarn was just a Wii game, so this is a little bit more of that. What I really like about this is the depth of field going on with the graphics. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, it looks like you're looking at a diorama, which is kind of cool. Nintendo likes to do that every now and then, like, kind of how um, Mario Brothers 3 was on a stage. I just pooped out that Yoshi, or that, that, that yarn ball. Have you, like, not played a Yoshi game before? I've n maybe not. I've that, never... is, that is literally all Yoshi does. He eats people, and then, like... Just, no, he like... legitimately pooped him out. It came out of his butt. Yeah, that's what he does. That is literally what he does, except for normally they're eggs. Oh. He lays eggs of people of, of things he just ate. It's kind of like it's a very fast metabolist, metabolistic thing. And what's weird is Yoshi is, is always referred to as a he, but Yoshi lays, lays eggs. So it's very confusing. All right, I'm jamming the B button, but I don't think I'm doing it right, Sean. What would it be? Pressing B. Yeah, I'm... But press down and B. Down... E, I'm doing that. Not doing anything? No. Oh, wait, maybe you're supposed to do it when you're in the air. Like, jump and then press B. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's like that, that uh, like, hover thing he does, right? Um, oh, oh this is going poorly. I'm dead. What, are I, you trying to, what were you trying to do? I don't know. It says, the, the button says to, to do this thing. They oh, there we I'm, go. They say I'm bad at tutorials. I don't think you can kill that power plant, by the way. The piranha plant, you mean? Piranha. Not power plant. Come on, Sean. It's a power plant. It generates power. No, it doesn't. It does. You don't know. I like all the details, though. Did you notice that sign behind you a minute ago was um, pinned down with a yarn, like a, a pin cushion? Everything's put together with pin cushions, actually. Well, this game kind of has... Uh, it almost, I want to compare it a little bit to Tearaway in that sense. Like it, it's so it owns its its aesthetic really well, and everything that it does is super, super in super to do with that aesthetic. Like it, it sells it and it owns it really, really well. Also, I have a lot of yarn behind me, Sean. There's two balls. That there are. So or that okay. there is. You can probably, if you're, not, I'm surprised you never played a Yoshi game. You can usually throw those. They're weapons in the other Yoshi games. Well, I know, like. I'm, I know that you can just swallow them and then shoot them at people, right? No, no, but like you can usually aim and throw them. Oh, there we go. I don't know how to 
Uh, like you usually use like a what is it a shoulder button and then an aiming reticule will appear on screen. Or since you have a gamepad, you might be able to just touch the gamepad. Like I said, I haven't played this one. Neither of us have ever played this. And oh, there we go. Of all the Nintendo games over the last year, this is one that I just didn't. Oh, there, play. there, I did it, Sean. Yeah, there you go. See? Yay! That's a, that's a core Yoshi mechanic. I'm so super was, happy right now. This game, ah, this game is really fun. Already. It just got, it just got like a million times better. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I am wrapping piranha plants up with yarn. Oh wow, that looked really cool actually. Right? This is yeah. baller. And the sequins are great. Yeah, it's th see this is the thing Nintendo's become good at, I think because like people gave them a hard time. People criticized Mario Kart very heavily for this. So they're like, "Oh no, Mario Kart doesn't have good graphics, it has good style." And if you ask me, it's kind of the same thing. But Nintendo knows that its system isn't doesn't well, have the, the visual fidelity of uh, of its competitors. So they they focus on it's like what it's whatever its strengths and what beautiful styles can we make. Well, all right. So this is completely a different game but uh dark souls is the same way dark souls on the xbox 360 did not look graphically amazing but its style was super good i can't believe we just started talking about dark souls on yoshi well that's what we're doing <laughs> um yoshi man i feel like we're really disorganized today i think we're both a little frazzled a little um, bit it's been a it's been a week it's been a it's been a long week. I know what Tim. You know what Tim. Before we get back to Dark Souls, I'm gonna start over. We're gonna start over right now. This stream. Okay. Eight minutes in. All right. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna count down, and say like you know count down from one. Count down to extinction. The count great Megadeth album. Count down to one. Welcome to Gadget Playdate. My name is Associate Ed Associate Editor Sean Buckley, who's already screwed up this reintro, and I'm here with Associate Editor Tim Seppolo. How are you, Tim? I'm happy. You're happy? Yeah, you're never man. Happy, man. You're always upset with me and grumpy and you hate my face. Why are you happy? Because I'm playing a Nintendo game that's absolutely friggin' adorable. And what I what I like best about how adorable it is and how much you love that is you were just not interested in playing this game ten minutes ago. I wasn't? I never had any problems with this at all. Like I don't I didn't like Kirby. I bought the last Kirby game and I was really disappointed in it. But I'm not I'm not mad about this game. Well, I didn't think you were mad about it, but like you were telling me a couple days ago, you were just having a hard time getting hyped for it because, like, when you played the last Kirby game, which was also very stylized, you were kind of like, "Oh well, I don't know. I hope it's not like that." I don't recall even saying this, but it's been a week without much sleep, so this is a definite possibility. That sounds I, like it sounds like you're pleasantly surprised, though. Oh, dude, I am, I am ecstatic. I love that basket you're getting things out of. Right? It's just it's, it looks like a basket. I mean, that's a stupid thing to say, but you know, like the the way it's 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 responding against itself and springing. It's, it's awesome. Looking. Ah, uh, what am I doing? What am I? Why can't I do this? Let's go to let's go to chat. They were they were correcting us from earlier. Kovar says it's a spiritual predecessor. Okay. It's not spiritual prequel. Uh, let's see. Denver says his sister bought a Wii U specific a Wii specifically Kirby's Epic Yarn and hoping this will get her to buy a Wii U. Oh buy, man. Buy I... him a Wii U. His sister bought him a Wii to buy it, play Epic Yarn. Oh. That's a good deal. Um and Kovar is having vibrant issues and Smith agrees with us from a design point this game looks incredible. I'm just pooping out yarn all over the place. I it's like a cat that got too close to the Christmas tree. And swallowed some tinsel. It's just yarn is just coming out of every which way of my body. That's that's Yoshi, man. Except for usually it's eggs. Like it's wow, that was cool. Sorry, I just caught up to the thing where you unraveled part of the level. Right, this game. I, I'm super happy. That's very good design. Oh man. Ah, uh, there we go. Sean, I I I am. God, this is like one of the most pleasant surprises I've had playing a video game in a while. Just didn't expect much and. Well, I mean, I always try to go into things with zero expectations, because that way it's hard to be disappointed. Oh, yeah, I guess so. And I wish I could impress that, that whole like that whole mantra on the ladies I date. <laughs> to go into zero expectations. Yeah, go on, come in, go out with me on zero with zero expectations, you will never be disappointed. Uh, I don't know about that, man. Going to get zero doesn't mean you're impressed by default. Well, no, it just it means it takes less to impress you. I don't, it's, it's kind of hard for me to get my head around this game. Like you're really enjoying it, but I keep looking at it. It, I feel like I'm having like a cognitive dissonance. Uh oh. Because I I'm angry and I hate things, and you're weird. It's weird hearing me enjoy something. No, well a little bit because usually that's that's our whole shtick is like I'm over positive and you're like over critical. But um, <laughs> like I love everything and you're like. 
Like, no, not. Uh, and it's like, no, Sean, you need to walk that back a bit. You're like, no, Sean, something sucks. I'm like, nothing sucks. Nothing sucks. Everything's great. But um, no, it's everything not. is awesome. That's. Uh, but it's it's more that like I think I'm buying into the to the textures too much because the textures look really good along the stream and I'm going I'm at lower quality than you through the stream right. so I'm seeing it worse than it is and I'm buying into it too much but it's not stop motion animation I, it looks it looks too much like yarn for me like do you do you hate crafting it, it it's like it hurts me to look at like no it, does, it, it doesn't look like a video game it, it looks like something is the Buckley household to crafting what the tiny town of Footloose was to dancing, Sean? No, the Buckley House is is to dancing. Is it's what the it's tiny a town of Footloose was to dancing. What? We do not dance in this household. I think you missed what I was trying to say, Sean. I also, that. I inadvertently just knocked that thing down, which was awesome. <laughs> the only thing that doesn't seem to be made out of yarn actually is those flying clouds. Uh, or possibly. are they made of yarn? I don't no, know. I think they are. I think they are. The yarns, the, I'm talking about the clouds with the question marks on that you just popped a few minutes ago. Oh, this is how I'm... Oh, crap! Missed one. Dang it. Now I gotta go back. What is your goal? What are you doing? Like, what did you miss? I don't, I'm confused. Being adorable. A.K.A. A Regular Day in the Life of Tim Seppla. I just happen to be playing a video game that promotes it now. Uh, let's go back. People just started talking, like, all of a sudden. Um... Tim is playing this like Sean. No button prompt, but a button prompts meaning they are ignored. <laughs> oh, is so. that Duke? It's Yaddle. Oh. <laughs> Kirby's had a few ah! recently. Uh, Canvas Curse and Rainbow Curse were too hard to be a lot of fun. Those are the ones you didn't like. And Epic Yarn was so easy it was broken. And he says he's pretty sure you can't even die in Epic Yarn. Because... Uh, there is an easy mode in this game, though. So maybe that's what that's like. So they say, let's see, when this is done by... Uh, Kirby's epic yarn. He was concerned it was going to be too easy for the same reason. Okay. So you will, that's what I think. That's what we should be deciding is is whether or not we think the first level is never a good example. It's always a training level. After we get a couple levels in, we I want I want you to give me a verdict on whether or not you think this game is going to be too easy because that's like the challenge with with these Nintendo platformers. Like I think some of the Mario games are too easy. I think some of the Donkey Kong games are maybe a little too hard. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, was it the last um, the last Tropical Freeze was is considered to be incredibly hard, right? Oh yeah, it's a tough game. Like I have it, you know, I got a I got a for some reason I got a download code of it. Like as I think it was my Nintendo Club Nintendo. Thank you for whatever. And I only got a couple levels in because it was pretty tough, you know. And I just it just uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh. It, uh -oh. it, it didn't fill me with the delight it needed to make up for the difficulty curve. <laughs> I like uh Cer was that ceramic Saturn. Yoshi's Bully World looks too much like yarn to me. Joystick, 7.8 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yoshi's, Yoshi's Woolly World looks too, like, uh, too realistic. Looks too woolly. <laughs> too woolly. <laughs> well, the joke there is 7.9 out of 10. That's the, the score that IGN gave Mario Kart Double Dash. Really? Yep. And it even... I don't know. I don't recall the review. But... If you go on to UrbanDictionary.com and you look up 7.9, there is a definition for it. Why is this? Where is this coming from? The audio that just comes up. I don't know. Uh, no, uh, I had a, I had a, I had the joystick stream page open for some reason on my laptop. But yeah, that's what that's what happened yesterday's stream, where the beginning of the what? intro was ruined because I had a. Because you were on it. I was. I had the joystick page up and or in Gadget Gaming homepage or whatever, and that came up. I don't. Oh, I have to I, shoot these. So anyway, right. what's the definition on... I don't... Dude, I'm playing a video game right now. You don't know it? I don't... Not offhand. I don't memorize this sort of thing. I know... I memorized my entry on Urban Dictionary, though. So you have an, you have an entry on Urban Dictionary? Yeah, I don't think it's appropriate to say on the stream, though. What I... What I, I thought... See, the thing... You were telling me an anecdote, and you're like... But I don't have the end of the anecdote. <laughs> well, kind of. That's basically what we said. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. 7.9. IGN cubes... Fanboy favorite editor, Fran Mabella. Mirabella. He, Mirabella. I think he works for Apple now, curating stuff for the App Store. Unleashed an unwanted horse head into the beds of many GameCube owners uh, by judging its killer app in the holiday lineup. Uh, the long-awaited sequel... To, that was not the long-awaited sequel. Oh, the long-awaited sequel to Mario Kart 64 with 7.9. The action performs... Th this action outrages the forum members of IGN and became the GameCube's version of Pwned. So it became like... 
it, it became the way of saying something sucked for the for the generation. I never heard that one. There you go, Sean. This is the st type of stuff you learn when you're talking to me on the internets. You you have you're a cultured man. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I, internet cultured man. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just collecting stuff. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Um, I'm wasting yarn because I'm a wasteful, terrible human being. But so so Sean, do you notice what my what my amiibo looks like? Uh, do you have your amiibo on screen? I don't get it. I don't. I'm, I'm sorry. Do you notice what my uh, what my Yoshi looks like? I did not even look. Let's see. It looks like Yoshi with yellow cheeks. Well, it shouldn't. Oh wait, it's supposed to look like Link. Yeah. I didn't yeah. catch on to that. That's too Link. The yellow chick cheeks represent his hair. Apparently. Well, we're gonna swap right now. I don't have a fancy dancy webcam setup like you do, but fancy. we're gonna swap right now to to Yoshi. Now, I don't have a huge amiibo collection because I just, I don't. I haven't found any that I really, really liked, so it's not like I've just... What in the heck? You all right there? I have, there are two Yoshis on screen now instead of just swapping the color. I did not expect that. Wait, wait, you have like a team now? Uh-huh. That's weird. I'm watching, I'm, I'm catching up to this. Wait, what, what, what? Uh huh. So, oh, I get it. Cause he's a special yarn Yoshi. He has a different function. I don't know how to get out of this now. Well, I oh, don't... what is going? This is all happening. Oh, so and what... then you can eat. Yo you can eat your own Yoshi. What Tim just did for those of you watching is he bought the special Yoshi amiibo that's actually a stuffed toy, and it's really cool. Well, it comes if there. You can buy just the game for fifty dollars. Or you can spend 60 and you can get the, the amiibo. So I was like, I want the amiibo. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. Joseph, Joseph's giving you some trouble. Joseph, our, uh, our, one of our editors in chat, um, the head editors of the gaming department, came in and said, did you not read our E3 preview, Timmy? Uh, I linked to it, and I read it in June, but like we have established, it has been an awfully long week. He didn't call you Timmy. He called you Timothy. I said it wrong. Of course he did. Yeah. What? what, uh, what? I'll okay. be honest, Joseph. I did not read our E3 preview. Monster. What I uh, you know to be I had a hard time. This is hard to admit because you know you guys know that I'm a big Nintendo fanboy. It's it's basically my console of choice. I only play the PS4 for exclusives and everything else is PC. My console of choice is Nintendo, so I'm a big Nintendo fanboy. But this game, I just couldn't care about. It. You know, it looks. That's because you're a monster. I'm looking at it. It looks beautiful, but I just whenever they talked about, it, I'm like, okay, you know, I just it's. But the problem was like I had the same problem with Splatoon, and I love Splatoon. I think it's one of those games I just have to play. Sean, I can't figure out how to get out of here. Oh, oh wait, yeah, I can. Wait. By the way, you're not on Urban Dictionary anymore. If you ever were, it's not. I can't find you. Um, I didn't list it as myself. Oh. Well, then how am I supposed to know it's you? Well, I'm not going to tell it because I can't because the entry that I have is not appropriate to read about on, read on the stream. So you made your own entry? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't count. Well, I didn't say that I, I... I said I have an entry on Urban Dictionary. I didn't say anything else, Sean. Well, that implies that you were notorious enough for someone to make an entry for you. Uh, no, it implies that I wrote one because anybody can write one. Yeah, but that's like kind of egotistical and weird, isn't it? No. Yeah. It'd be like, I, oh, tweeting's egotistical and weird. Same no, idea. It's, no, it's not. Urban Dictionary isn't a social network. How do I get past this? Urban Dictionary is like Encyclopedia Dramatica, man. Dude, it's Urban Dictionary has predated Twitter and crazy madness for a long time. So and, I, that, I, and, and you know what? That still doesn't make it a social network. But I'm just saying... <laughs> I, I, me creating an entry on Urban Dictionary. If I create an Urban Dictionary entry for myself, that would be egotistical. That's what you just said you did. No, said I said... A, entry. No, I did not. I said that I create... I put it... I have an entry on Urban Dictionary. I have a word that I made... And I put it on Urban Dictionary. Okay, that's different. When I say, you say, I have an entry on Urban Dictionary. That's like saying, I have a Wikipedia page. Usually when someone says that, they don't mean, I wrote the Wikipedia page on Bobbles. <laughs> You're sure. a monster. I'm trying to figure out how to... Hold down Y to float jump, is what Joseph says. And you should eat an enemy and toss an egg at that cloud, is what... Uh... Ceramic Saturn is telling you to do. Okay. Well, my thing is, is I struggled the, with this when I was playing <laughs> w uh, Wind Waker HD over the weekend. Is oh, yeah, that, that yeah, the controller? Like I'm, I'm bad at Nintendo controls because 
I am thinking like 180 degrees off. Oh, right, because the uh, the XBY. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this is this is just me just being bad at Nintendo controls. You know, I for some reason don't have that problem. My brain automatically switches gears. It's like, can you drive a stick shift? Uh, I have not. Oh, okay. So for me, it's like driving a stick shift or an automatic. I just automatically go. My brain just goes into a different automatically mode. when you're automatic. driving automatic. When I drive a manual too. Oh. Well. It just uh, my my brain switches to the other mode. Uh, SP48 is calling him out. He's saying, "Gee, the bickering's starting early today." <laughs> and uh, and Ikari says, "Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I have a a bad disposition today. It's my fault. I'll get better." Okay, uh, I'm not going to the mellow mode yet. I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous of Tim. I, I, I would rather not have to manage another amiibo on or another Yoshi on screen right now. And I'm a little. It's weird that I can't eliminate it. Like, I, it'd be much easier if I could just... I mean, I'm doing it now, but it's because I have the egg or the yarn egg in my mouth. Mm. I wish I could just get out of it and then just play only with which, one Yoshi so which, on screen. Which which character is you? Well, when I started the game, before the stream, I... You were Link, right? I was... No, no, no. You started out as regular Yoshi, and then I was like, oh, well, all right. I thought it was just something aesthetically where you could just change the... Where you can just change the the appearance of your amiibo or your Yoshi on screen. Ah, I'm bad at this. Why don't Why there don't you take the yarn Yoshi egg and like throw him off the cliff? Because he reappears. Oh. Yeah. See now you're now you're familiar with my con con my corundum with my corundum. conundrum. Yeah, it's just it's too much because I always have a problem with games where there are more than one person on screen at a time, so I don't play. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't... Oh, son of a mother! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, oh, I did it! Uh, I don't... I don't play Super Smash Brothers, and this has been a problem for me since... Oh, even all the way back to Baldur's Gate on, on Xbox. Uh, I have a hard time keeping tabs on everybody on screen and, say, and figuring out which character I am. I get stuck. I get lost a lot like that, because it's just... It's hard for me to, to keep an eye on everything at once. Yeah, this is weird watching this. I don't know how I would handle that because it's not like you can move them independently. They always do the same thing. Right, so they're, and they're, they're always they're like the same gap between each other too. Right. Well, you look. Wait, you just you just uh, no, and he comes back. No, he comes back. Uh, this is weird. Like it's expecting someone else to pick up player two controller, but no one is. Right. Uh, there we go. Uh, Akari's asking if it's a glitch. I don't think it's a glitch. I think we no, just don't know. No, Nintendo what games don't really glitch. It seemed like it didn't explain it well. Yeah. And now I'm trying to just Oh, there we C go. Ceramic Saturn is is uh is mocking me. Is mocking you. He says it's sad that you do that because Xbox controllers came out years later. If anything, you should be not be used to Xbox controllers. See, that's the sad and pathetic thing is is Tim didn't have a Super Nintendo. No, I didn't. So he he missed out on the revolution there, and you didn't have that issue. I with see what you did there, considering that the uh, Nintendo's net, or the Wii was for the longest time called the uh, the revolution. I see what I'm, you did there, Sean. I'm I'm glad you think I'm clever enough to have done that intentionally. I, I'm I'm just, glad for that. It's not I, true. Um, you don't have that problem with the PlayStation though, because they relabeled the buttons to circle, square, triangle. Yeah. Well, and know. also the thing is, is so if you look at Shovel Knight. It remaps the controls, regardless. It, like it has standard controls regardless of the platform you're playing on. Oh, they're in the same position. Right, they're in the same position, and that's. I wish I had that option. Well, it doesn't remap the controls here. It's the you know there's nothing like you're making an argument if this was on Xbox, the buttons would be in a different place, and they just have different labels. Right, right. The thing with the Nintendo games is they assign stuff to like the label. Regardless of the label, like, all right, so the A button in every game is basically jump. And that's regardless of what controller you played on. The problem for me is that the A button is where the B button in my mind is. I don't think that's true. I've played a lot of uh, a lot of Nintendo games where B is jump. I'm pretty sure B is jump on uh, Super Mario uh, Super Mario Maker. It's, it isn't here. Hmm. So A is jump on this? Yeah. Usually a lot of Nintendo's games give you the option to change that. Well, we'll find out right can now. You, can you press start and go to the menu and check it out? Uh, I don't see anything like this. I see continue game, post Amiiverse, view manual, retry, and exit course. That's odd. Yep. 
Well, then, then it's then what it's doing there. I think it's adopting classic Nintendo controls. It's breaking my brain a little bit. Is because, what it's doing. Because because so if you look at the the controller right now, and you turn it at an angle, you have B and A next to each other instead of at an angle to each other, and I think that's how it was. The outside button was jump in the on the original um, Super Mario Brothers, and probably in the original uh, Yoshi game as well. So it's probably trying to keep some legacy control for the previous Yoshi games. I'm not going to say anything about that because my mother always told me if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. You're uh, keeping legacy controls is not a nice thing to say. I, 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 my brain is not used to pressing a or the button on the the right side of a controller. It is not used to pressing the bun- button on the right side of a dying of a dangle of a diamond on a controller to jump at all. Like. Uh- well, I mean, really, like, again, like as as Ceramic and I are saying, you know, I'm a monster uh, here. I know that's, that. That's 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 your fault for having. You're from the wrong generation, basically. You're a young whippersnapper, and oh, we are angry and dude, sad. Dude, I don't. How how young do you think I am? Young enough to not have a Super Nintendo. No, it's not that I didn't. So we've established this previously on the stream, but I always had the wrong console. On a, by default, I know, I know. always. I'm still judging you based on an age that you aren't, though, because. But I, I had a Genesis. It's not like I was like, oh, I didn't get a, I didn't get into gaming until I had an N64. It's I had them. I had games for every generation. I just did not have the right one for the longest time. Also, the wrong thing. Golly, a Genesis. Three buttons in a row. Whose idea was that? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna go back actually, and I'm 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 literally going back right now because I want to check out a uh... Shadowrun two, not Shadowrun, but um, Shining Force two. That's Shining what you want to check out. So were those games any good? The Shining I like Shining Force two a lot. Those? I played a little bit of it. It's one of the only RP- JRPGs I've played. Also, I really enjoyed what I played of it. Right, because like they were like like that's what people play besides Final instead of Final Fantasy on Genesis because that's what there was. Yeah, it was really good. I liked it. Uh, I don't remember a lot of what I did, but I liked it. I it was turn based. It held up really well. I played it when my Xbox 360. There was a while when my Xbox 360 was getting fixed for a Red Ring of Death. I borrowed that game from a friend of mine, my friend Alex, who is the guy that works is working on stuff on a contract basis for Sony now. Um, I play. I borrowed it from him and I played it, and I really enjoyed it. I liked what I played. Yeah, here we go. Just to confirm. I, everyone in chat agreed with me, but I just I booted up my Wii to find out. Um, in original Super Mario Brothers, we're getting what you was holding B, what you have now, holding B to run and pressing A to jump, and you kind of would situate your hand in your thumb. I guess you wouldn't have done this since you didn't have it. You would situate your thumb kind of in the middle of the two buttons, so you could always hold down the run button and then just tweak it over to the right to tap the A button and jump. It's sort of like how it was done. So I guess that's probably not a control experience that you learned because you right. didn't have that particular device. Um, but Super Mario World, which of course you also didn't play, according to uh, I think Yaddle in chat was it was. Um, no, maybe it wasn't Yaddle. It was one of the guys, Duke. Uh, Yaddle. No, it was Yaddle. Um, on the Super Nintendo Mario Brothers game, Super Mario World, it, B was jump, and so it was the same as you're used to. Yeah, yeah. See, so that's it's, the it's, way you know. That's the way it should be. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's fine. You know, as long as it's not press up to jump. Oh, you mean fighting game style? Yeah, but they were like platformers that would do that. You know? Oh, and that's it, dumb. Yeah, what kind of platformer does that? Probably oh, a bad one. Or Yeah, early NES games that hadn't kind of figured it out yet. And some really particularly bad games would use up like to go into doors and to jump. Oh, well, you had to, was it in Jurassic Park for Genesis, you had to press up to jump to open doors. A mechanic that is never introduced until the last level of the game. Really? Yep. Yeah, see, those old games, they had problems like that. Also, what really blew me away was uh, the summer when Anthony and myself, we streamed, uh, we did a Jurassic Park bonanza. We, I was really alarmed to, to find out that you can play through all of the original Jurassic Park game on Genesis in about an hour. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you know what you're doing, right? Right. That was the thing about those games. They weren't technically long or hard. It's just they were... Figuring out what to do is like an ops phrasing. Figuring out what to do. No, you said they weren't particularly long and hard. <sighs> you said it, not me. You said it. No. You're the one. Yeah, you said it. You're the one. You, you said it. 
I did, I, I'm just hey, 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 I'm just calling it like I see it. Yeah, how... a, de a deviant mind calls everything in a deviant way. Get over it, Tim. True. Uh, what uh, is this? Well, this is bouncing on. No, no, you're missing this. Like, this is some Fez level crap. Fez? Are, are you like you? You'll turning... see. You'll see. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's cool. Ah, and I keep wasting these yarn balls. Speaking of pressing up to go inside of a door. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, no, I kind of press toward it. Or what? I, what have you? Isn't that up? From your perspective. I... It makes sense because my brain works in 3D, Sean. It's um, well, that's what pre why pressing up always worked. But like, if if pressing up was also the jump button as it was in some of those old games, that's when it became a problem. Uh, so I'm looking over at chat really, right quick while we're loading, and Duke says that Double Dragon with A plus B jumping and heavy oh, clear yeah. platforms was a joke. I never played Double Dragon. I was a Streets of Rage guy. It's, well, I think Double Dragon is because it was an arcade game, right? And did the arc the original arcade game was it a two button <gasps> game like that? So oh, many NES games game had that problem. Adorable. <laughs> oh so many... wow! Umbrella Yoshi. Yeah. I like this is something that you might have. That, that everybody in chat, you need to relish this, and people watching on the on the the archive. I am genuinely happy. You are hearing moments of joy coming out of my mouth. I'm trying my hardest to ruin that for you, but it's not working. I mean, you you, you succeeded pretty well by saying I was dumb. With what controls. Oh, well, I mean, I'm just teasing you. I mean, your controls are... Your control history is wrong for Nintendo consoles. Your your face history is wrong for Nintendo console. No, I got the perfect face for Nintendo consoles. You have the perfect face for radio. Booyah! I do. I have the perfect face for Nintendo consoles because there's no connect to <laughs> screen share. Perfect face. Perfect face. Oh, man, this is great. This is... I love the animation See, like, that the umbrella is... does when you float up. This is what I was really hoping for when I play, when I bought Kirby earlier this year. I was like, oh, this is what it's going to be. And then it was something entirely different. And Kirby was like clay styled, right? No, it was, it was, there was yarn and stuff. And you had to draw yarns for the paths for Kirby to float on. And there was, like I said, there was no direct control. And that's what really bothered me. Also, uh, everything was displayed on screen for the controller. And I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I looking at the controller? When I have to draw everything, like I get looking at the controller because you have to draw everything. Now let me let me revert. Let me uh, change a this a little confused. bit. So everything is done with drawing on the controller. So when you have the gamepad, you draw the paths, and it forces you to constantly look at the. It forces you to constantly look at the controller, and I was like, well, why do I have my TV on at this point? I'd rather I'd much rather look at my TV. Because there, there was no indication on screen of the TV of saying, oh, okay, this is where your cursor is right now. So oh, yeah. I was like, all right, why am I, what am I doing? Why? It, it annoyed me really, really badly. Like, what's the point of the TV? That's right. because they were trying to, it was one of those games where they tried to upscale from a, because it, it, that was based on, uh, like, the Crystal Curse or something? No, that's the N64 I game. don't know what the name of the game it's, is. It's, it's based on the, a, a 2DS game. Uh, not a 2DS game, uh, uh, just a regular DS game. Of, with the same mechanic of drawing. And on the DS, it makes sense because you're looking at the whole device once, right? There is no TV to look up at. Um, on the on the the Wii U, like mixing those can be really difficult because then you're only looking at half of the available game and it's just mirroring it. You know what's the point? It's like it's like using um, it's like almost every Wii U game that doesn't use the gamepad. It's just kind of like it's on the screen. And if you're not using the screen, why are you using the gamepad at all? Right, right. And I was like, well, what's going on here? Kirby what's... Canvas Curse, Kovar says. Uh, the Wii U was Cur uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Uh, same concept, different games. That's right, I'm not, but I'm, 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 I'm saying like 3D World and 3D Land. It's like the same kind of playing mechanic, but it's a new game based on it. They upscaled it for a new console and made a whole new game in the process, which I, I don't really like, to be honest. Um, I did with 3D World because it was such a good game, but like, yeah, that's one of the others I wasn't interested in Rainbow Curse because I was like, well... You know, it's it's on the DS already in the same kind of gameplay format, and it makes more sense because you can see the whole DS once. But, I mean, I can't really give a fair evaluation of it because I didn't play it. Right. Uh, crap, I can't get over here. So did it give you, like, any kind of storyline when you first started the game? No, the no. I started it, and then, well, it did, but I was I was like, all right, we need to get through this, and we need to get streaming. 
So I, I did not pay attention to it. Oh, you didn't watch it. I was going to wonder, like, did you get, were you normal Yoshi who got turned into yarn, or are you just yarn Yoshi is a different thing? I don't you, know. You have no idea, dude. No, this is like you trying to explain to me what the intro of Metal Gear Solid Five was all about. Looking at the dude's butt. There are zero butts to look at in this game. Looking at butts, that's what it was about. This game is about butts a little bit. I mean, Well, I mean, I'm pooping stuff out. Goal! Yeah, Link costume's pretty cute. I kind of wish you had a few more amiibos, because I know that's kind of a big deal. Right. I wish that I could just switch back to standard Yoshi without it popping up a second character on the screen. Well, what does, let's see, Yoshi Yarn Amiibo. I'm going to look up what it does for you, because we should have read that coverage from E3. And, I did. Uh, I read it a long forgot. time ago. That's the thing. I read this in June, and it's now almost, it's halfway through October. What does it do? It, you know, this website doesn't say, what does the Yoshi Yarn Amiibo do? What does it do? Ceramic Saturn says, half the Nintendo characters don't know what pants are. That's true. Well, that's like, they're like Disney that way. Made from actual yarn, Yoshi has never been more adorable. And that's actually pretty true. It's a pretty awesome little amiibo. I kind of like it better than the game. Dude, he's honest. going on my desk. Right, like he looks really good. You know, it's, like it's, his head's cocked to the side a little bit. He looks really curious. He's sitting. He's sitting on my right underneath the monitor that I use for streaming right now. Odd, it doesn't say what it does. It apparently, like I, I'm sure it was known. I just can't. Uh, I just can't figure out what it's supposed to do. Whoa! Like an, a, a clear explanation of it anywhere. I'm knocking through sponge, Sean. Okay, tapping either the yarn amiibo. Uh, tapping the yarn amiibo, there's a giant sized one and a normal sized one, apparently. Yeah, there creates, is a giant one. The giant one is giant. Creates that double Yoshi. So, I mean, that's just the power. Like, that's what it's like. If you like, if you don't like using that, it's kind of not useful to you in the game. Right, yeah, I don't like using it, which is a problem. What am I doing here? Get, I think, Gil alright, now I finally, I hit a glitch here. Gil Crispo says that, uh, Yoshi is a dragon that doesn't need pants. He probably didn't hit a glitch. I bet you can get through this. No, no, no. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I'm clipping through some stuff. Oh, that's not a very big glitch, though. No, but it, it's... That, it, looks, that looks really weird, though. Yeah, right? But, I mean, that's normal, because you're supposed to be able to jump through the uh, surface. So, so oh, if there you we were, go. That's, that's if, as intended. <laughs> sure. Oh, I like that it has to have an arrow there. I almost didn't see it, actually. I, didn't, I thought that green pipe you just went through was a pit. Was a I think that's what's bothering me about it, is, is all the yarn is, like, the same texture. So everything looks the same to me. Like, it's kind of... Like, I'm, I'm a lot... To be honest, I'm not watching a lot of this because it's kind of giving me a headache. Well, you're a monster. I, I don't know, man. It's like... It's it, like If you take an individual screenshot, this game is beautiful. But in motion, it makes me a little nauseous. I don't know why. Because you are the worst human in the world? I mean, but close I, to it. How does it make me the worst? I, I I acknowledge its beauty. I just get seasick looking at it. I'm broken. You, we all are, Sean. Or it could be your frame rate. Uh, yeah, because it looks like it's running at sixty. No, I mean it, on the the stream. It's right. Yeah. Different. Yeah. The stream is different. Yeah. Stream so is it's entirely 60, different. Sixty. Story. Sixty. It probably looks a little bit better. These clams <sighs> are pretty cute, though. Yeah, they are. Like, this whole game is... I don't know how you can be a monster. Well, I know how you can be a monster. I'm not a monster. You just overreact. You know what I've noticed, though? The I overreact thing, to a lot of things. Was that, too. The only thing not made of yarn is the piranha plants. Oh, you're right. But you get to wrap them up with yarn. Yeah, like, they're like the imposters in this world. It's because they're evil. Well, no, because the other plants... There's other enemies that are made... And they're all made out of yarn. Yeah. Like that shy guy I just murdered. The shy guys are made of yarn. These clam things are made of yarn, but the prana plants aren't made of yarn. They they might be made out of fabric. I can't tell. Uh, no, they're not made out of fabric. They're just plants. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Ah! I do like that when you take out enemies, it wraps them up though. That's a really cool looking. It's effect. adorable. Except you can't. Well, you can't destroy the prana plants. You wrap them with yarn. So yeah, there's true, some, true. there is some, there is some design consistency in that sense. 
Right, I'm not saying it's inconsistent. It's just it's an interesting choice. I wonder if there's a specific reason why well, they're not. Maybe, maybe you probably would have found out if you watched the intro. Well, you should uh, you should call Nintendo and be like, hey, what's with this? I don't know the answers. I gotta find someone's uncle who works at Nintendo to get the answers. Or they, they only tell the uncles. Only the uncles. Only my. If you can't say my uncle works at Nintendo, then they don't want to know. I. I would, yeah, that'd be handy. Yeah, if you don't have a niece. Or oh, nephew. dude, dude, those those the little white plants that are that are on the ground, they they come from from stuff that's floating down. They're like the cotton, like we have a cottonwood tree. Oh, well, my parents, sorry, my parents have this gigantic cottonwood tree in their in their backyard. And oh, what did I just do? Uh, and the cottonwood tree, it every spring it starts doing crazy stuff. And well, not crazy, it's it's nature. Uh, every spring, it does this thing where it drops seed pods, and the seed pods turn into cotton. And during those seasons, for during very specific times, the air just fills with cotton, and it looks like it's snowing. And that's what those look like to me. Well, they do, and you're right. That's creating the clan, the clan plants, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if I'm supposed to go up there. Ah, uh, poop. Don't, don't lose. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Tim, don't poop, and I was like, well, I don't have to. I don't do that either. Golly. Rude behavior. My my worst behavior. I'm like Drake. Here exactly one person in chat will will appreciate that, and that would have been Edgar, but I know he's not in chat. Ah! Uh, Akari Akari says the game looks cute, but it feels like it doesn't have the same masterful level of design as other Nintendo platformers do. Maybe it doesn't, but I wouldn't judge it too early, um, just because I found like the first levels in these mainstream Mario games usually don't exhibit the best level design. Like the first, like for you, the first world of every Mario game I've ah. ever played usually has kind of like too easy or simple level design ah. to give someone the ability to catch up and, and then build confidence. Time, build confidence, and by the time you get to World Eight, they're really hard. Or these days, like I think the most recent couple Mario games have a have a whole eight worlds after the first eight worlds, and they're usually really hard. Like yeah. the sec the second set of worlds in Super Mario 3D Land, like I didn't get through them, but they were fantastic. You know, but the the first eight worlds I found to be way too easy. Yeah, wasn't that the the 3DS game where it's like, oh, you know, I finished this, and then all of a sudden, no, so the like, game was just beginning. Right, and now that's kind of a theme for them. They did that in uh, I think Mario 3D Land or Mario Super Mario War. Um, Watch New out. Super Mario Brothers for Wii U, and then they did it again in Super Mario 3D Land. So these yeah, yarn cool. balls that I'm pushing that have the teeth on them, if, if like you edit man. ears, they would look like a, the dead mouse head. Oh, I thought they just looked like a really angry Pac-Man. Well, there's that, but I think they look to yeah, me like the... Yeah, they look like the dead mouse head. It does look like a dead mouse head, yeah. You do do. What is this? There's some wild hidden stuff going on up here. Okay. I'm into this. I didn't expect it, but I mean, of course, it's a hidden thing in a Nintendo game. You don't ever expect those. Sean, what is what would you say is your favorite Nintendo game ever? Uh, by Nintendo or just game on a Nintendo console? By Nintendo. Oh, that's tough. That's why I asked it. All right, I'm gonna have to get up and look at my shelf, man. Uh, does Mother count? No, I don't think. I don't think those games are. Why even... wouldn't it count? Well, is that is that published by Nintendo? I think oh, it's published by Nintendo. You're right. I don't think it is because they're really protective over stuff, and they let a lot of like was it? There's that site FanGamer.net, and that started as a they sell really cool stuff, but, but that like started, started out as, as a like mother uh, fan site, yeah, mother fan site, yeah. Right. Like, so I'm not sure if that's them or not. I really like that game series as far as like they're made RPGs. Uh, I might say they're all RPGs, my favorite games. Maybe Super Mario RPG, just because it was so fresh at the time, mm -hmm. you know? And it was like a really, really unique experience. Uh, How are the sequels to that? Because I know there was a bunch of them. There aren't any sequels to Super Mario RPG because that's a Nintendo collaboration with Square. Oh, what, what is? Square? what was the thing? You're thinking about the Paper Mario games. Paper which, Mario, that's Which it, are like yeah. Nintendo doing it on their own without Square. And those are really good, too. Well, the first couple are pretty good. Like, the first two are really good. Uh, Super Paper Mario I got bored with, even though I know a lot of people really like that one. And then the Sticker Star one that came out on 3DS I think is kind of lackluster. Okay. Uh, I don't know, what's, what was your favorite be? Um, I almost said Diddy Kong Racing, but that's not made by Nintendo. That was a rare game. Uh... Um, but it is using Nintendo properties. 
And it is, so, and Rare so you, was a second party developer for Nintendo. So do you argue that Donkey Kong Country isn't a Nintendo game then? No, I don't argue that. I mean, because if, if Donkey Kong Country is, which is a Rare game, is a Nintendo game, then Diddy Kong Racing is a Nintendo game. Okay, then Diddy Kong Racing. I really, yeah. really, really like that game a lot. It it surprised the crap out of me in a bunch of different ways. Uh, did you play the DS remake? I did not. because I, I have that and never played it. I bought it because I knew Diddy Kong Racing is a great game and I just never played it. That, yeah... Yeah, I I get that. Um, I what's that? I really liked. I don't. I don't know. I can't tell you why I liked. I liked it more than Mario Kart because it felt a little more fresh and more. There was more variety to it. Well, it's not a kart racing game, really. It's an adventure game in in vehicles. Okay. I, know, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I think that yeah. may be why I liked it then. Right. It's it's so it's like I didn't like it because I never realized that until later. Like my friend had it. I was like, oh, it's just a Mario Kart ripoff that doesn't feel as tight to me, right? I'm like, why would they make this game? And then later I grew up a little bit and I looked into it some more and I realized, like, wait a minute, this is like a secretly an adventure game. You know, it's just in a cart format. And right. then you had the and I always liked the airplanes in that. Like that was the one saving grace. Like my friend would say, You wanna play Diddy Kong Racing? I was like, only if we do flying levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the flying levels were great. Like it was like, oh man, I'm flying. Yeah, it was like it was really it was what quite a thing. I and I think the other favorite Nintendo game, I actually think the first Yoshi's Island game for Super Nintendo was an excellent game. Now, was that... Let's see, I think... was Wasn't that one of the games that Nintendo gave away for part of the 3DS Ambassador program? I'm almost yeah. positive it was. Yeah, yeah and I, have, I, I played I bits of it. Yeah, I, I really liked the it. the Ambassador program. And the Ambassador program I don't like as very much because it's the GBA version and they added a bunch of Yoshi, like, talking noises to it. Oh, yeah, and then Mario was talking a lot, too, and I was like... Well, Mario you, always you need to, Well, still, I was like, Mario, you need to shut up. I don't He's always you. crying in it. Do you think that was? Do you think that that was Charles Martinet? No, the baby Mario. Yeah, Mar Mario doesn't actually talk in it. It's just baby Mario crying. Do you think it was Charles Martinet doing the crying? No, noise of course song? not. It's too baby sounding. To and to be clear, Charles Martinet is the the voice actor for Mario and has been for the last what twenty years. No, that was a good several years before he was hired. He wasn't hired until um, sixty four. Sixty four, and that was Super Nintendo era. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. Um. Yeah, Sean, people. stop yawning. It's contagious. And you're going to make everybody in chat start yawning. That's okay. Now, chat, if you guys start yawning, start blaming Sean and then spam chat with Sean is a monster. I'm going to... Uh, they're going to do that anyway. Why, do you, why are you so fixated on me being a monster? I see you for what you really are. I'm so nice to you. I'm not going to sleep on my couch anymore. I'm going to make you sleep in the bad hand. Dude, I, slept, I didn't even sleep on the couch because it was broken. I slept on the floor. We have a new couch now and you can't sleep on it. So there. Uh, let's see. So, Kovars' mother was developed by, uh, Ape, Hal, uh, Beanie Brown, and Nintendo. Uh, so it's several, so, but it does count as Nintendo. So that's, that's a really good one I like. Um, Duke says he wants another Dr. Mario. Uh, they made one for the Wii U. Uh, no, or was it Dr. Luigi? Eh, close. It was, close yeah, it was Dr. They did something because of the whole year of Luigi. Also, was Super Luigi, uh, land good? Super Luigi Land? Whatever that, that Luigi platformer was that came out during the year of Luigi. You you mean Super Luigi Brothers, which is just Super Mario Brothers in mirror mode? Oh, are you serious? Yeah, it's 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 part of uh it's just part of uh, NES Remix 2. It's and it's, no, 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 it's you can buy it. There's a disc. I was looking at it on uh, Amazon. Oh that no that's that's uh oh I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah that's that's down DLC reskin of new Super Mario Brothers. It's like it's like it's basically a bunch of uh, it's a reskin and it's like uh, like eighty new levels. Oh, Luigi! It's super hard. Like they're all really tough. I didn't beat it, but like it's it's basically a, a level pack and it's good. It was a good value at the time too. I got it. I kind of wish I got the disc because it would be nice to have the disc of that, but I just got the DLC instead. Yeah. Uh, so our our gaming overlord, Mr. Joseph Volpe, he what he does is every Nintendo game, he buys the disc and oh, leaves yeah. it sealed and then he downloads it. Because the way that Nintendo handles stuff, it's gonna be they'll it'll be worth some, like when hit with his collection, it'll be worth some bucks. Because just try like right now trying to find Pikmin, is Pikmin is something like sixty or seventy bucks right now, if not more, if you yeah, can like, find it. Like for a used loose copy, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, he's got a really nice collection because he leaves them in there uh let's see who else are the i'm going i'm trying to catch up with, with comments um uh the language of this game is lost on tim says yaddle i'm like, good with like, this it doesn't bother me i'm like now i'm finally accustoming to the controls yeah and like 
I think it's just because you never played a Yoshi game before. Well, it, it took me a while. I've played a bunch of Zelda games, and it still took me a while to, to get acclimated to the controls once again while I was playing Wind Waker HD over the weekend. Yeah, that's true. Also because so, Wind Waker HD is like using a new controller and a scheme from an old console. Yeah, that's also a thing. So it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, da, da, what da, da, do da, we da. have here, Sean? I'm reading Mother is Nintendo. Everyone's correcting me a bunch, basically. Because you're um, always wrong. Uh, Paper Mario, people are saying they love that. Um, Viva Fiesta and Ikari are talking about the next Zelda, and he's worried it's going to pull a GameCube Wii uh, situation. Like, Remember with Twilight oh, Princess, yep, how yep. it straddled consoles? Yep, and then on the Wii U, they, what they did is they put everything basically in mirror mode, right? No, on the Wii mode. Like, the, and that was the first time uh, that Link was right-handed. Usually he has a sword in his left hand, but right. they, he's been right-handed recently because they had to mirror it so it would match your thing. So so I always wonder now, there's this rumor that that game's coming back, Twilight Princess. Uh, I didn't gonna... like Twilight Princess. I didn't like it either. I'm, I, I got to, I, I finished the Water Temple and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Everyone was very much like, oh man, this is great. It's going to be the good looking one we wanted all along. And I thought it was just kind of boring. I didn't care for the plot. I didn't care for the wolf mechanic. I, I was, I was very bored by it. And the AI it was bad too. Like when yeah, you were, I, yeah, it was just, it wasn't I, a great game. I wasn't a fan of it, but a lot of people get upset with me when I play that. They say, no, 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 what it is, is, is it's, uh, it's a more refined version of the Ocarina of Time formula. And I, I think, right. I think, but okay, at that point I, it I, felt disingenuous and it felt like a, an Ocarina right, like, of Time clone. I, yeah, I guess. It felt like, like it was it, trying too hard. Right, it didn't. It didn't feel right to me, so I never got into it. But they're remaking that, right? And maybe I'll give it maybe? a shot. Maybe you know? I don't know. I don't. I have it well, on GameCube, that's, and that's, I was like, yeah. That's the rumor is they're gonna remake it as a HD remake for uh, for the Wii U. You didn't hear this? It came out this last week. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw the and rumor. That, and that makes sense because they were experimenting with that and basically every other 3D Zelda they've had since to, as for an HD remake for the Wii U. That's something that they've been thinking about. Um, so they probably already did some work on it, finishing it up. Like, like they did half the work, and they said, "Okay, well, let's do Wind Waker instead." And finishing up now, that makes sense. I can believe that. Yeah, but it would. My, yeah, because I, especially since what the new Zelda got pushed until 2017, I think, right? Right, which is part of his thing here is where no, not 17, just next year. Oh, okay. Just, just spring, from what I heard last, unless it got pushed again. But they said just just next year. Um, so the question I have is that I haven't heard anyone else ask is, all right, so they're they're making a Wii U version of that, right? Are they going to be giving us the gamepad maps or the Wii maps because if it, is it going to be played like Wind Waker using thumbsticks or are they going to retain the motion controls and I don't know the answer to that. I think what they'll do is they'll probably just give us GameCube because it makes sense. I don't know like because they also have still the motion controls on it. What I want them to do is give us both. Mother of Pearl! I want, them to, I want you to be able to choose between which, which one you want to play. We, motion controlled and uh, One Direction or GameCube. One Direction? Or that, that British boy yes. band? I don't know. I, th I think that would be really swell, but I'm I'm just not convinced that they're gonna. Do Can we that. never say swell? Because that game, that's, that word is just I dislike it. Well, I love that word, so shut up. <sighs> yes, because you're a monster, Sean. Because I'm not... a I'm a swell guy. Why don't you like that? You don't like old vernacular? No, it's just it sounds really. It sounds archaic. It really does. Like there are plenty of words. Like I use nefarious and. And nefarious golly. is an, ar an archaic word. Golly, if, if anything, sounds more archaic and silly than I, just, I don't swell. like swell. Swell, s swell reminds me of Leave it to Beaver and just that whole, oh, hey, gee, golly whiz, Wally. It's like, yeah, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm, I'm a monster. Yeah, that's, well, it's, it's a word I use. I use that. I use gosh and golly sometimes. Uh, I, I use a lot of those older words. I'm uh, struggling uh, on this, getting this yarn thing right here and do i have need, been for do you need to get that why don't you just jump on side on top of the basket that's in in between of the thing oh, and then you're jump right there thanks thanks the platformer man you got to think about platforms i'm um, uh, paper mario games were not made by nintendo but they were made by intelligent systems who despite popular release is not owned or even part of nintendo they're fully independent but it is a nintendo game nintendo probably directed part of it they probably you know they probably were involved in that they don't just let anyone use right the Nintendo properties without... Uh, right, I'm skipping that yarn thing. You the work, You couldn't jump on top of the basket? I you jumped just... on top of the basket, but I couldn't jump high enough to get what I needed to do. And I just got frustrated. I was like, all right, I'm done. Uh, ah, mother... Yeah, I thought he was saying that, like you were saying, he was worried the next Zelda is going to be pushed to the NX or have a split console release and the inferior version will be in the Wii U. I'm hoping that's wrong. A lot of people are saying that, but I feel like that would be such bad blood for the Nintendo that I, I hope they're not doing that. 
Or if they do do it, they'll they'll re-release the game for the NX a year later when the NX comes out. Because that means they would have to delay, despite what a lot of people are saying, I don't think the NX is something we're going to see in the next uh, 12 months from now. What's the rumor that just came out that said we're going to see it in 2016? I find that unlikely. It, it's not impossible, but I don't I don't believe that. I don't think there's any evidence to support that. I think it's just people expecting the Wii U to be dead already. Um, I could be wrong, and I'm okay with being wrong. I just I well, I, I would hope you're okay that. with it because you're wrong most of the time. I'm usually right. No. But, uh, ah! Ah! But I don't oh. think. Um, I don't think I don't I don't think that I just I don't think that's likely. I think it, it we won't see it till spring 2017 or or fall 2017. I just don't expect it to be a holiday release next year. It might be they might push it that way for profit reasons, but I think if Nintendo is doing what they actually want to do. Like, I, I, I think definitely if Iwata was still around, they wouldn't do that. Maybe it's changed post I mean, you are really Well, that's, no, that's another thing, too, is we're in a... We're dealing with a company that may or may not work... May or may or not operate this, the way it used to because we have had the... The the leadership has been replaced, essentially. Right. So here we so, have people talking about this, too. They say it doesn't sound like Nintendo... To release the NX fast, that fast. Duke is saying the NX is actually a mobile phone. See, and this is the other reason I don't believe it, because no one really knows what the NX is. Like, right. I've heard multiple rumors from a super powerful game console to practically a PC to a mobile phone to some sort of mixture device that becomes a more powerful console when you dock it, but it's also a phone on the go. It is it is so ambiguous what this is, but we have so many rumors going around saying it is this that nobody really knows anything about it. So I'm really Nintendo releasing a mobile phone is I'm gonna say this right now. It's banana cakes. That's not. Gonna, I, I doubt that's happening. I could see like they have, they say oh they're gonna go all in on mobile and like I don't see that as being that likely. You know. No. I I really 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 don't see that happening. I've seen the rumors that he's referring to, um, but I just I'm not sure. I'm convinced of it. You know, it's just I haven't seen enough strong evidence. But Nintendo's pretty good about keeping things under wraps. Yeah, um, yeah. That them and Apple. Well, everybody yeah. kind of just knows the app, what Apple is going to do. Somehow those rumors get out. But Nintendo's really good at keeping stuff under wraps. The problem with the NX Mobile rumor, though, that gives it so much credit is it comes from the same source that successfully predicted the DS and the 3DS and the Wii U. What's that they source? Were, I don't know. It's a Japanese newspaper. They said Nintendo's going to announce this. And then Nintendo every time came out and said, no, we're not. That's completely made up. And then two days later, they're like, hey, guess what? Huh. You know, every single time. And so um, I, I, I'm sure they've gotten a few things wrong in the past, too, but they usually had it right, you know, and it's... Um... Oh, Mother Pearl. Mother of Pearl. Sir, uh, what, what were the rumors? Sir, Sir Alexander is saying he sounds, says Wall Street Journal's unit, rumors sound on the nose for him. Um, what were those rumors? I don't remember. There's, I don't, I've read up so many different rumors from different sources. I don't know which one to believe anymore, nor do I remember which one comes from where. Yeah, and Wall Street Journal... Like does get things wrong on occasion. It, it's 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 a thing. Like they don't they're not always a hundred percent on on point. Kovar is guessing, and he, this isn't one of the rumors. This is what he thinks it is, and he thinks it sounds smarter. Is that the NX will be an OS style platform that takes on multiple forms, a console, a handheld, and other things like that. That sounds too comprehensive for Nintendo. I mean, as much as I love Nintendo, they don't have but, their act together for but, that. But 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 even when Iwata was still alive, he said that they were going to be working cl more closely to make sure. They had interoperability between their games, and he pointed toward the Vita and the PS4. Right, he's getting better at that, but they're still several. They're still behind the curve on that. So them jumping ahead of the future platforms to the next generation of that in one jump, it seems like a big stretch for them. Like I don't know if I believe that's what's going to happen. I, I see where he's getting at, and that would be cool. But the Nintendo I know from history, I don't trust to accomplish that. Okay. And uh, Sean, Cer Ceramic Saturn says Wall Street Journal's rumors. We're basically about the same OS thing. Two systems that combine into one. Um, see, that sounds... See, like I hear that rumor, and I trust Wall Street Journal's opinion on a lot of things, but that sounds so much like the 3DS concept drawings we saw three or four or six years ago, whatever it was. Like, this is what we want. Wouldn't that be cool? But like, just not based in any reality I've ever heard of. Maybe it's from the multiverse. <laughs> Wall Street Journal does have wide resources. <laughs> You know what I want is I want a multiverse. I want there to be like a multiverse media convention, like some some portal we have that gets a giant Comic Con from like a, like a several dozen or all conceivable universes that can conceivably be fit into there. And so you can go to this con and you can go to a universe where you could see uh, the version of Back to the Future where Eric Stoltz played Marty McFly or 
um, a version where um, George Lucas <laughs> made the prequels in the 70s, you know, uh, or a, a version where George Lucas made uh, episodes one, two, and three first, and four, five, and six 20 years later. And so we could go into this multiverse, sorry, you said multiverse, first thing I thought of, and get the best version of every media in every reality and have like the ultimate collection. This is, this is my dream. So what you're telling me is you kind of want the ability to operate how Bioshock's Elizabeth does with yes. in terms of open up these tears. And go and go, spoiler alert, and go anywhere you want and get the right things. Because then we could have the version of uh, of I keep, I keep coming back to Star Wars. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2 that was finished in the first place. And not made by Obsidian. And and uh, and or we could have you know they're not that bad when they do things right which they did. No, first. because South Park is incredible. Yeah, well the first the first Knights of the Old Republic is a good game. But that's not Obsidian. That was Bioware. Oh right. Yeah. That's why. It that's felt why so it much. felt. Yeah. That's why it was Bioshock. Okay, that makes more sense. Wait, yeah. What? That's why it was Bioshock. No, not Bioshock. Uh, Mass Effect. Yeah. It's, Sean. It's, like, it's like the prototype for Mass Effect. Um, Sean. What? I get things wrong sometimes. I told you. Uh, let's see, what else are people saying? Online gaming is online gaming. No one plays together at the same house anymore, says Duke. I think this is referring to a previous conversation I said. Uh, Nightshade, I would be surprised if in five years Nintendo's will go the... I would not be surprised if in five years Nintendo goes the way of Sega. Uh, no, not going to happen. Yeah, so that, that, that rumor has been around for a while. It's not going to happen. Like, no. Because Sega was hemorrhaging money and had no money stores. Nintendo... Nintendo probably, has a war chest. Also, right. that company's been around for over 100 years. Right, like I would, I would see it. It would be more likely to me if they went the way of Konami and got out of games altogether and just focused on their quality of life thing. Yeah. Than, than making games for other platforms. Nintendo is a, is super it, proud as a company. Right. They're obscenely proud. They would rather call it quits and say that was a good run. Yeah. You know, I yep. think. If if they weren't profitable, they wouldn't they wouldn't straggle onto that. They would go somewhere else. Right, because that's almost admitting defeat by saying, all right, well, we're just going to make everything for everybody now. Right. And I don't that's think, not part of their culture. I don't think they would do that. I, I don't find that likely. Everyone keeps saying that, and that's because they want. And, and what I like about it is it's very flattering to Nintendo, to be right. honest. Like, they want them to do that because these people want Nintendo games, but they don't want to buy another console just for Nintendo games. Like None of these people who are like, are like, oh, Nintendo sucks. They should just give up and make games for Xbox. None of them are saying Nintendo makes bad games. They're just right. saying, they, they, They're they, just they, saying they own the improper console to play them. Right, and and so it's actually so I don't think that's particularly likely, um, I, but that, that rumor's been around for a long time, I, and I just I think it's a different financial. Mother, situation. this checkpoint on this sucks really badly, so I have to keep redoing stuff. Like there wasn't a checkpoint right before the boss room, and now I'm going through the crap that I had to to go to the boss room, and it's just, it's annoying. I'm just gonna speed run through this. Oh, we we're, we're having we're having some old style console wars in the chat now. Uh oh. Ceramic Saturn sitting back saying people have been saying that since. The SNES era, and uh, Sega would smash them, and they'd go the way of Atari, blast processing everybody, and then uh, people are going back and forth and back and forth. Now. Uh, okay, so everybody that asked, you know, oh, get a couple of levels in, and then we'll talk about if it's too easy or not. No, this game is difficult in spots, so don't worry about that. There is a mellow mode, which apparently takes the challenge out of the whole thing if you just want to run through it. Just turn that on at some point. Just like like before we end today, turn that on. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, I'll turn it on for the boss fight because I have no idea what to do in the boss fight. Uh, Milkmaid said war chest with you like at the same time as you at the same time. Basically. Yeah. You guys both said that. Um, I should say you love the SNES and NC Store, but everything after those is a letdown to me. Nightshade, I'm wondering how old you were for there because I kind of felt that like in the same era of the GameCube. I wonder if I was just going through a transition age and I wasn't ready for that. And then I went back and I enjoyed a lot of GameCube stuff later on. All right. So. Right here at the top of the hour, I want to say thank you to everybody that's in chat. Also, everybody that's tuning in on the archive, thank you, everybody. We're going to be broadcasting for another hour yet, and we're playing Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U. And right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something I usually don't, and it's, I'm going to drop the difficulty into easy mode. Because uh, Big Montgomery, him and I aren't best friends. So Nightshade says he's about 36 now, so he's just about our age. So, yeah, he was just the right age to really be loving the SNES and the N64. And uh, and so the GameCube, the GameCube, I'm younger than you, and the GameCube felt too young for me in a way that the N64 and the Super Nintendo didn't. So I kind of know how you feel like it just, it didn't feel right. 
at that time period. There's some great stuff on it. Don't get me wrong. I went back and played it. Um, but the GameCube and Wii era just, like, it didn't hit me the same way. The Wii U's hit me really good. And as Hacker points out here, Hack Later, or whatever his name is, Splatoon really helped the turnaround for Nintendo in sales and for me, personally. Like, I'm a huge Splatoon fan. I don't know how to defeat the... Oh, there we go. He's a mole, right? This guy's a, he's, this guy, I don't know how to beat him, but he's an enemy in other Yoshi games, too, I believe. He's like a big Montgomery, yo. No, wait, he's a giant version of the mole from Super uh, Mario World. Well, and there's also some moles that are rolling around here in the game. There we go. I, people are right. people are dropping their edge. Gaming Kate's 32. Hack later is 48. So I'm 30. I'll be 31 next weekend. I'm approaching 33, but not quite there yet. Sean, you'll always be 18 in my eyes. Wow, that sounded really bad. Or am I approaching 32? I had that probably like, when I was between 27 and 30. I couldn't remember how old I was. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm hitting that again. Like when I was when I hit 28, I started remembering. But like between 25 and 27, I, I kept forgetting. And now I'm mm -hmm. starting to forget again because I just don't care. Yeah. It was between 27 and 29 where I had no idea how old I was. Like for a while, my wife used to have to tell me. And I thought it was like, like how long ago was 1984? <laughs> well, you were born in 84 as well. You were born. You had to have had like a early birthday then because I'm super late in the year. Yeah, I'm on May. So, so yeah. I, 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 must be turning, I must be turning 32. Yep. Okay. Wait, no. You'd be turning 31, Sean. No, I'm already 31. Uh, I, I, my brain is broken. Also, math. I'm all, trust me, I'm already 31. Uh, how old am I? Was I'm, I'm gonna check now. I'm gonna 31 years, five months, and 11 days. That's how okay. old I am. There so, we go. So that's that's how it is. So you're that means you're about to turn 31 because you're late in the year, right? Uh huh. My parents needed a way to keep warm in January of 1984, and nine months later, I arrived. My mother is the is is the woman of too much information. Am I and the man of too much information? No, 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 because she once sat me down and told me about the night I was conceived. And oh, God. Wow. That would be super not, awkward. I wouldn't like, be able to handle that. I like that. the details. She just kind of like says, like, yeah, your, your dad came home from a business trip and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I said, if we want to have a girl, we're going to have to wait. But he didn't want to wait. And then you were conceived. And then she sat there for a minute. Probably shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> wow. Oh, and then we went out to dinner. And wow. I, dude. I, that's, yeah, if my parents did, I would not be, I couldn't well, you know, do what it. What do you think it is? I didn't think anything of it. You know how I say things that are inappropriate and don't make sense. That's why I was raised by people that don't know boundaries. <laughs> you know, like, wow. it's, it's kind of uncomfortable. It should be uncomfortable, but, like, my mom always said stuff like that, so. Uh, 1997, Viva, Viva La Fiesta was born in 1997. And, wow, uh, I feel... 18. So you've been around about as long as the DualShock 4 controller, bro. Wow. He does not remember a time a gaming... He, he did not exist before gaming had joysticks on on every single... Man. Game. Think think about that. Oh, wow. good look. He, yeah, he didn't exist in a time where there wasn't internet either. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Like, it's... it's I, I always forget that, like, so many, so many functional people, adults today don't remember not having the internet it's kind of a weird idea yeah ah what is going on what is that uh, what is what is this madness milkmaid says it's because my dad came home with a vhs copy of return of the jedi and was like let's chill uh <laughs> that's, that's what happened. <laughs> that was really really good yeah speaking of though vhs my uh my mother called me yesterday yeah, and my mother and dad in a panic. He's like, we can't get these DVDs oh, to play. Right, right. Yeah, you were talking about right. this in chat yeah. yesterday. He's like, I can't get the DVDs to play. What's wrong? I'm like, okay, well, I'll help you install the program you need. And we're talking about it. And he's like, he's like, I don't know when do they play. Mom got them. They're high definition and everything. And I said, what? Ooh. And they're like high definition DVDs. And I was like, well, describe the box to me. He's like, oh, it's, it's a plastic box. It's red. Yeah. And I was like, so it's, and it says HD dash DVD at the top. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, Papa. Did they? Uh, did That's they... not gonna play on anything ever. <laughs> no. Nope. Did they? Uh, did they get King Kong and the first season of Heroes? They apparently got Meet Joe Black. Oh, the the movie with Brad Pitt where he's yeah. death, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to spoil it, jerk. Dude, I I. 90s movie though. Um, it's a good film, you know. Oh, but like, they got that and a couple other movies, and 
Um, the odd thing about it is they're actually useful to me because I, my mother-in-law has a room in her house that has a HD DVD player sitting on top of a laser disc player. My parents have a laser disc player. All they, I my dad bought it brand new uh, oh, yeah, so back in the you, 80s. They used to watch early 90s. on it. Yeah, yeah, they were. Those videos were like a hundred bucks each. Oh yeah, they weren't cheap. Uh, I wish I didn't sell it now that I know they have that because when I first started dating my wife, we went to a bookstore and I got a laserdisc copy of the original Star Wars trilogy. Oh, see, my dad has a copy of just A New Hope because yeah, he had... wasn't super into Star Wars, but they were like, "Oh yeah, this is a great, this is a great movie for it you should, for the medium." Yeah, I had that, and uh, but I sold it for like a hundred fifty. I got it for like. 20 bucks and sold the the set for like 150 200 dollars which was great because i was in college at the time uh and i needed the money but then like i was I, young and needed the money but now i was thinking you know it's so rare even the dvds with the unedited non-special editions are hard to find i kind of wish i had oh one. yeah yeah definitely yeah so. that's what i have i well i have the dvds that are the special editions and i never upgraded because i mean they honestly i got those for christmas and i've never watched them oh, ever they're not completely bad you know, they, well, the, the only thing, I mean, so... I'm not like, saying that they're bad, I'm just saying I've never, just much like I refuse to buy the Lord of the Rings extended editions on Blu-ray because I haven't watched any of those since I watched them on DVD. And I own the DVDs, but it's like, I haven't watched them since then. Especially in the terms of Return of the King, the extended version, you need to set aside, like, what? An afternoon? Hours. Four yeah. and a half hours? Yeah. Nobody's got time for that! Yeah, I, I fall asleep through most movies I watch now anyways, and it takes me a week to watch them. I saw each. I saw the first Fellowship in theaters two or three times, and then I saw every other one one time after that, and I never felt a need to ever watch any of them ever again. Ever well, ever. the extended editions were like, all right, these are, these were, those were like super really well done DVD special editions. Right, like I just, what I heard is like, oh, they're even longer? No, I was satisfied. I don't need to see that. Like I've never had any desires. They were longer, and they still didn't include Tom Bombadil. Uh, just I we're not going to get into my problems with Lord of the Rings movies right now. It'll take. Well, it'll yeah, take, we can. We can talk about. No, it. I'll talk. No. I'm my. All right. Well, I'm no. going to talk about my problems with Lord of the Rings movies then. I hate those movies. And oh I wow! Why. That's they're, a strong word. They, they, they're not good movies. They're they're excellently made movies. They're beautiful movies. They're wonderfully acted. I think they're bad films. That that's fair. I would love, dude. I think we should talk about this. I just I think they I think they just okay. We can talk about it a little bit, but if you want to go on it, I have a 20 minute video of me playing Shadow of Mordor like somewhere on my, my, my Twitch channel where I go on about this um, of why I don't like Lord of the Rings and it, it basically boils down to these are great pieces of art and there's a lot of great things about them but I think they're just they're terrible at telling the story they're not good storytelling they're inefficient storytelling they, they use the format of the motion picture poorly and I wish that they had all this money times like 20 and that they had been like an HBO series that went on for five seasons that's what Lord of the Rings should have been. I don't think the movies are good. I, I'm not going to fault you for any of this. I think that's a really good, that's that's perfectly fine. Really, you're the first person I've ever met. No, who, dude, who I didn't totally get that. Despise me for that opinion. Usually, they're no, like, no, you're a monster. They're masterpieces. Like, no, they're 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 great works of art. They're not good movies. Right. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, a, yeah, there's no, a difference between between a incredibly well-made movie and a good movie. Right. Right. Uh, Avatar is a well-made movie. I'm not, yeah, I don't I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> And the other thing is, you can have you can have a movie that's that's not well made that's a good movie, or you can have a, a a movie that's not a good movie that you still love, and that's completely okay. There's nothing yeah. wrong with loving Lord of the Rings, even if I think it's a I, uh, my objective opinion is that it's not a good film. It's not a good. Hold film hold on, movie. dude. You? you just did an oxymoron. There is no such thing as an objective opinion. That you can have an opinion from an objective standpoint. No, you can't. Opinions are subjective. Okay, that's true. Dude. Now, did you notice That's what got me wrong? What got me riled up was the sub was the the syntax was, was the misuse of the word. yeah. Not yeah. like not like oh yeah, Lord of the Rings are not great movies. It's like yeah, I'm on board with you then. But then you're like oh my objective opinion. I'm I'm I'm, I'm out. Okay, I think you can have <laughs> you you can it can be your opinion that something's objectively bad. There you that, go. That's but you I cannot mean. have an objective opinion. You cannot that. have an objective. It's my opinion that like, if you looked at it objectively, you find it to be bad. However, you're right. It's still an opinion. That 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 thought is an opinion. So you're right. I, I, my syntax is wrong. <laughs> and it, okay. No, no, no. I'm good oh. now. Oh, that was a jump noise. I thought you were like you said something again. <laughs> no, no, that was a jump noise. 
Um, so are people are people destroying like my opinion? Let's look at the chat. But I mean, like you should like them. If you like them, that's great. You know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy them, uh, or, or that they're not good films in that regard as as an entertainment. I just I don't like them, and that's okay. On the other, on the other hand, I think Wild Wild West Whoa. is a terrible movie, okay. but it's so much fun to watch. I've never watched this film. Oh, it's 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 awful. It's oh. it's, but it, it's a lot of fun. It's stupid. You know. Okay. Is and that the like, one with Jackie? No, I'm thinking of Shanghai Nights. I think that's a terrible movie too, and I also enjoy watching it. It's okay. not a good movie, but I like it. Oh um, gosh, you know what I watched recently with a buddy of mine came in town from Detroit, and he was like, "Dude, you gotta watch Kung Fu Hustle." Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That movie is bananas. Yeah, Kung Fu Hustle is is super good. Did you ever see what 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 uh, the precursor to that? No. Kung Fu Hustle is the super amazing follow up to um, Shaolin Soccer. Oh, right, 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 yeah, my my buddy was telling me about that. Yeah, Shaolin Soccer is good, but Kung Fu Hustle takes everything good about Shaolin Soccer and takes it to the next level. But Shaolin Soccer is also kind of half of a love story. Okay. Love both of those movies, though. They're just, they're they're so much fun. Yeah, it was, I I genuinely did not know where things were going. Like, I had no idea what to expect. Uh, right, like, it starts off kind of like a serious Kung Fu film, and then it, like, takes it to, like, this absurd level of effect. Yeah. You know, it's 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 beautiful. Okay, so uh, to go back to what you're talking about, Lord of the Rings. Uh, my problem with Lord of the Rings, like I liked, I thought they were good movies. I, I have not watched them in a long time, so that could change. Uh, I keep dying here, but what was I gonna say? Oh, uh, my problem is is that they felt my I liked them because they felt risky because they were nobody oh, yeah, they had were, done anything they, to that scale before, and it was a huge yeah. risk and a huge undertaking. And because they were all filmed back to back to back, it wasn't like, oh yeah, by the time they got to Return of the King, it felt like, oh gosh, they're just milking it. It was like the whole, the feeling of risk pervaded throughout the entire series. Right, that was, it was a genius move on Peter Jackson's part to say, we were going to film all these at once, so they're, they'll be in the can. We are making all three movies. Right. This is happening. Right. You know, that was, that was good vision. The problem for me is when you go to The Hobbit, which feels... It feels like what happens when nobody tells Peter Jackson no. I feel the way about The Hobbit in many ways, and that line the way I feel about uh, Harry Potter books after number four. It's what happens when you tell a cre- you can't tell a creator no. Oh. Well, see, I've never read Harry Potter. I know Jessica thinks I'm a monster for this. Oh, I mean, they're good books, you know. Um, but after four, they kind of like, I feel like the... They lose focus, and the they, the plot isn't as good. The writing's not as good. No one edited someone who was largely still at that point an amateur author who is just getting their feet off the ground. Got it. You well, know, uh, Grant, you you and Jess are gonna have some words to share. I no, I, I like them. You know, I just don't really care for the last four books of the series, or however many is after four. I don't know, seven, three books. I don't care for them. I think they're not as good. I think the last book is terrible. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, but anyway. So what are your uh, I, thoughts on Twilight, Sean? <laughs> I think you know what's amazing about Twilight. My wife, my wife works at a bookstore. Meanwhile, store. on the on the Yoshi's Woolly World stream, on Yoshi, this is Yoshi's Woolly World. We're book talking chat. books. We're talking books. My wife works at a bookstore, and they just got like the announcement previews for this thing, and then it came out the same day. So it's been announced so far, as far as I know. If not, I'm sorry for breaking an embargo first. Um, wow, Sean. Stephanie Meyer, whatever her name is, is rewriting the Twilight books, and she's swapping the genders, and that's that's her next book series. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I just like I've read parts of those books, you know, and they're just, they're not the masterpieces that need that. <laughs> I think it would be more interesting to instead of swap genders, um, maybe go to, to a creative writing class and then revisit it. Well, I mean, if you're gonna tell, it's okay to keep telling stories in the same world. Even for during the same time period, but I'd rather than just swapping genders, because I don't think that'll be significantly different. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll suddenly be the masterpieces the first books aren't. Um, maybe. Uh, I think it'd be more interesting <laughs> to tell the perspective story from a perspective of like a, a tertiary character, you know? Yeah. You know, someone that's not important to the main story and find out what's going on in their life, and that could be really interesting to me. But sure. Well, let's go back to we haven't gone. Yeah, to we chat have in a, a while. Yeah, we have a ton of stuff gave, in chat. Also. We, we, we gave you guys so much ammunition, so... <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, I want to say thank you to... There's a, I can't pay much attention to chat today, but there are a ton of new names in there, and thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Um, if you guys like what you're hearing, hit that follow button underneath the player window. It's the heart button. It lets us know that you like what we're doing, and it lets you know whenever we go live with whatever we go live with. 
You're so, so good at the pitch. I, I try. You got that down. I never do it. It's always you. If you if I ever do a stream without you, I'm gonna have to set up like a timer that like pokes me in the ribs as they do the pitch, do the pitch. Uh, um, uh, that mother. Uh, 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 oh, there we go. See. Going way back, Ceramic Seven says he still remembers calling Nintendo tech support because he didn't know what the weird yellow and red wires coming out of the back of his N64 was. Because he had an NES before RF was a thing, and so that was a big oh, upgrade for me yeah. to understand how to hook it up. You know? Oh my um, gosh, I did that. Wow. Duke uh, said he never had a computer, so he didn't do PC games. To go on to that, the thread about the 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 RF support and stuff. My, I helped my best friend Josh. We, I, I, I almost broke myself. Uh, we went, he bought an old CRT TV off of Craigslist, a really, really nice 36 inch uh, Sony Trinitron tube TV, uh, does 720p and I think 1080i, and it is gigantic and it weighs more than my 65 inch plasma. Oh yeah. And he lives, oh yeah, and he lives on the third floor of his, in oh. a third floor unit in his apartment building. Oh, that sounds awful. Yep. So... Once we got to the landing, uh, halfway up, I was like, oh, God, I think I'm going to die. And then we went and we lifted up even further. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm broken. Let's just get rid of that and buy a new TV. It's well, no, 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 no. There's, there's a specific reason why he did this. He bought this the other weekend because he wanted something to play his old games on. So he wanted something to play Dreamcast and Nintendo and Super NES and Genesis on because it doesn't look proper with a That's true. A uh, CRT flat panel. Is, is better for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm still mad at my brother. He had... Um, uh, up at our family cabin, we are keeping this old, um, j like 1980s color TV that looked perfect for old consoles. Up yeah. this this family uh, house we have, and I was gonna go grab it to build a game room with it, and he threw it out and replaced it with a bigger TV he got off Craigslist that was also CRT, but it doesn't look awesome. Okay, yeah, but the thing is, is so he yeah, had an NES. So he had an NES, and he's like, he goes to pull out the cables. He's like, wait, 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 what? The NES had had RCA jacks. He goes, yeah. I was like, I only ever hooked it up via RF. I never did anything RCA until I got to the N64. So when I had an NES when I was a kid, our TV did not have either. It had um, antenna screw-ins, you know, like like the yeah little... the RF jacks. No, no, not jacks. The little little flat pieces of wire that you screwed onto, oh, screwed behind screws yeah. to let the signal through. So then you could have an RF jack. So yeah, so we and we didn't have the RF jack. So my dad like stripped some wires, did some stuff, and like manually screwed into the TV. And no one could set the Nintendo up but him because like it was like using technology from the 70s. Now, do you think that he did that as a way to say, "All right, no more Nintendo for you guys"? No, he was like, just lazy and didn't want to buy an adapter. And didn't wow. Want to get a new TV. Uh, sorry, Sean Buckley's dad, if you're in chat with us right now. Well, that's how he works. He does everything. He used he used to uh, a couple years ago. He would, he would say, it's like, we're going to do it the Buckley way, which is, for him, like, the easy way. And uh, and my mom says, you shouldn't sully your father's name with half-assed work. He's like, all right, it's the RB way. <laughs> what? For his initials. You know, he, he straight up knows he does things lazy. Wow. Um, See, no whereas my dad, my dad, like, when we build stuff, he overbuilds the crap out of everything. I mean, when he wants to do something right, he does an excellent job. When he rebuilt his 1965 Fastback Mustang, it's perfect. I'm you sorry know? that he had a Mustang. It's a great Mustang. You're a jerk. No, um, no, it's a it, no. It's not. A, if it was made by by Dodge, maybe we could say that. But a Mustang. Dodge had great cars too. Yeah, it's just the Mustang was great. It was an old. It was a reskinned Maverick essentially, and the Maverick was. So look, get over it. The Mustang is not a race car. It is just a really cool, fun consumer car, and that's fine. Oh whoa! I just did that. It's fine. Get over it. No, anyway, no, no. That's not what I'm. That's not what I'm joyous you're about. You're compl I remember this during our uh, during the Forza stream. You were like, yep. "Oh, it's not. It's not, yeah, a, it's it's not a real. It's not a real Mopar." And like, no. Well, it's not. no, no. A Mopar was a right, right. uh, medium body car with a gigantic engine and made right. by Dodge. But you're saying it wasn't a. It wasn't a real. It's not like a. It's, car. Yeah, it's. I don't. That's th fine. It's still Mustangs are still super fun cars to have and drive, and that's okay. Oh, I just murdered myself. Anyway, I'm trying to get through the chat. You keep stopping me. Uh, Kobar is saying that uh, that the Lord of the Rings books were perfect, but the pacing of Jackson is what ruined them. And I agree, like, his pacing wasn't great. He, that's what I mean. The pacing and the storytelling isn't what I liked about those, is, is what I disliked about those, uh, specifically. He says he manages all, of once to w uh, all at once to waste time with bloat and skip important details that the books explain just fine. Also, Yeah, and then he does some really weird fan fiction stuff with it. Yeah, he said you had to read the books to understand the stories, and that's lazy. That is lazy. Uh, that is lazy 
fiction making. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, I don't think he told the story well, but he did so many other things beautifully. Like I said, there's a lot of triumphs of, of, of creation there, but as a complete product, I don't like them. Yeah, if you, I feel like if you have to go into any entertainment property and say, oh, well, you have to do all this other work first because it won't stand on its own. Well, to be fair, it does stand on its own. You can understand, well, for the first three movies, you can understand the story. Yeah, um, I, dude, I, I haven't watched any of the Hobbit movies after falling asleep in the theater on the first one. I thought the first one was pretty good for like the first, the first oh my half. Oh god, first, it was bloated. Holy I think, god. I think the first half of the first one is a little bloated, but it's okay. But like the problem is like they, they could have done like cut like 20 minutes out of the first half and then finish the rest of the story in the second half and they chose not to. And they That's, could have also made like the whole scene with the, with the trolls at the, at the fire uh, a lot more funny and not this huge, crazy, epic, scary thing. Right, like because The just, Hobbit was a really light-hearted book, and Tolkien described it as a book for kids. Yeah, there was a lot of great things about the Hobbit movie, but like the fact is, like it should not have been a trilogy. They should have made something else for the Cimmerian content. Yeah. Um, it, it, anyway, but I think everyone kind of agrees that they're not great. I think it has the first movie has its moments. The other ones, I just don't care at all. I'm told though, and I want to watch it just because I like Benedict Cumberbatch's voice, and I would pay him to read the phone book to me. Um, I'm told that like the last what half hour of the second one, Desolation of Smog, is nothing but dragon porn, and I I love like I said I love Benedict Cumberbatch's voice, and I want to see it just for oh, that. Oh, the la the last half hour of Desolation of Smog is, or not not that one, the beginning of the third movie and the end of the second movie are a lot of fun. Like when he's there in the cave with Smog, it is really cool. Like him and that's what I want. That is that is really cool. I'll admit that. And but like. It doesn't make up for the other problems, you know. Yeah, my pro my thing was that like they made that super lighthearted book into this epic dark fantasy thing that it did not need to be. Right, like and it, it wasn't epic dark at that point either. It was just the scary moment between the the hero and the dragon, and it wasn't super epic. It was just it was like very cerebral and it was very it was very uh, conversation driven. Yeah, you know, it it was really good. So there were moments so, that. So how much like the last act of Seven was it? I did not see Seven, so I can't tell you. What? You know I have not seen a lot of movies. I didn't know you haven't seen seven. Particularly movies from the 90s that were R-rated. <sighs> didn't see a lot of those. I was very protected. Unlike me. <laughs> Who was not protected at all. Nope. My parents were careful about that sort of thing. First, first R-rated film I remember seeing was from Dusk Till Dawn. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that was years after it was out on VHS. So... So what is chat saying, Sean? How much are how much are they how much are they ridiculing you and myself? Uh, they're not. They're doing pretty good, actually. They're giving pretty good arguments, supporting and disagreeing with what we're saying. And some of them are saying they love it because of reasons or not. Uh, let's see. Holy Milkmaid crap! Is saying, Milkmaid is is really active. Thank you for joining us today. I think he's new to the chat as well as Ceramic yeah. Saturn. Thank you. Welcome no, Ceramic Saturn Saturdays. was in yesterday. Oh, you're right. He was here yesterday. I'm not made saying that both movies, Kung Fu Hustle and uh, Shaolin Soccer, were good. Um, and Duke says we should check out Kung Fu Fury uh, or Kung Pao. Kung Pao Entered the Fist was a completely different. Oh, I heard it was monster. ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's probably it would probably be considered racist today. Wow, you are enormous. What happened? How did you get? Oh, so I I almost wanted to say a bunch of things that would be very inappropriate, so I'm not going to. Like that was right happening. I was like, no, Tim. No. Uh, Wow, you know, it, it, the detail of the yarn is really apparent when he's that yeah, big. Yeah, and, like, when he's that big, you can see, like, there are fuzzies coming off of him around the edges. And they're not... It's it's impressive, the level of detail. And the By fact the way, that it's all such high resolution and high... And looks good. Looks kept, really good. I kept wanting to say this, but I didn't because, like, we were caught up in other conversations. Those windmills that you were basically, like, painting with yarn, that looked mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I really loved how that looked. Uh, let's see, what is hell? The Hobbit movies were terrible to almost everyone, Kovar says, and that's pretty much... Um, was, uh, uh, Oblik says, what year is it? Are they really debating The Hobbit right now? Well, we're talking about a lot of things. It's 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 uh, always always off topic. Oh, oh, mother of pearl! Uh, Kovar says he thinks the Harry Potters were more risky than Lord of the Rings movie because they knew they were going to have to do the entire series even uh. though all the books hadn't been written yet. So in that way, it's kind of like, um, I think... Game of Thrones. They have that same thing. Oh, yeah. Catching up to the books and content hasn't been written and they have this 
this timetable they need to keep. True. There's also there's also the thing with kids growing up. You don't know if they're going to stay good looking or they don't know if they're going to stay good actors. Way to say the shallow thing first, Sean. Well, no, I'm I'm just saying this. You don't know if they're going to stay good looking. Yeah, this is something executives consider, and you know it. You know, Hollywood executives or whatever made that heartless people. I wonder if they went through and they did like the computer software, and they're like, "All right, we got to make sure we got to we got to project what these kids are going to look like in ten years." Well, that's the thing. Is like, are they going to look like the part in ten years? Okay, see, that's a different thing. You said good looking. Well, good looking for the part, like you didn't like, know, you like, didn't even qualify. You were like, just are they going to be good looking? Up, get over it, whatever. Let's move on with the conversation. Like for instance, my example here is um, the kid that plays Nabel Longbottom in those movies. In the first movies, he's like this kind of cute little chubby kid, and then he grows up to this super tall, skinny dude. I didn't even recognize him in the third movie. I'm like, oh, do they change actors? My wife's like, oh no, he just grew out of his baby fat, and I was like, wow. Well, there's difference. also the problem with the fact that Chris Columbus directed the first two, and those movies are not good. I disagree. I don't. The third, first two are the only ones I like. Wow. So yeah, I was watching it, and I have a couple of Potterhead friends. One of them, specifically being our our wonderful gaming co-writer uh, Jessica yes. Condit, and she said that she said I, I I told her I was like I bought the Blu-ray copies, and I'm going to watch them this weekend. She goes, "Good. I support all that." And then on Monday. I got a hold of her, and I was like, I made it through one and a half, and I said, and it wasn't great. And she goes, I should have told you to skip the first two, because they're not good. I think and a buddy of mine said the same thing. He goes, weird. you should not watch the first two. The first two are the only ones I like, for the oh. most part, because I think they're... Chris think Columbus they're... also directed Pixels. Oh, well, so what? I, I, I'm not judging his other work. I'm judging this work. I thought they were I thought they were better paced. Uh, I thought they were more concise. But most importantly, I think the style was more on in line with the books and the universe. Um, he was consistent. Uh, whichever you thinks the first two are the only good ones is busted. I think just just sent me or someone just sent me um, on our, <laughs> our internal chat there. Uh, I'm, we're getting in trouble for this. Uh, Nathan is saying. That I I'm busted or not uh, the first two are not good movies. Okay, let's be fair to my <laughs> let's be fair to my rosy disposition. I haven't. Seen you mean your rose-colored glasses? My rose, no, not rose-colored glasses. I haven't seen them since they were new in theaters. Oh, okay. But what I did, what I like about them that I don't like about the other movies is the correct way to say it. Maybe they're not good. Um, there you go. Is that they have? I think their visual style is consistent with the books and the universe and the lore of the universe in a way the other books aren't. Which is basically like there are certain things about the Harry Potter world they're not supposed to uh, like wear or understand normal human clothes. They're too sheltered from the human world, normal world, the Muggle world to get that right. Okay. Um, so they wear weird things, and what they do doesn't make sense. They don't know what human stuff is yet. In in movie three, all, this, all of a sudden they're wearing like H and M stuff. Really? You know. Like, the, the, the visual style changes of what... Their robes change. Their clothing style they wear changes. Uh, the school looks different. You know, everything is inconsistent with the other films, and that drives me crazy. Okay. You know, and that's because the director changed. And I'm not saying they're bad movies, except for the last two are awful. Um, but... And I don't care who disagrees with that. They're bad. Those what are is, really badly paced. The last two here? movies are one book. Do not ever split one book into two movies. You're a moron. That's bad storytelling. Or three... And in cliffhanger movies, you're a jerk. That was that was compelling the first time someone did it, and then every time after that, you're a jerk. You know, don't. Oh, mother of. Ah! Uh, so I, I liked the first two, but I again I haven't seen them since they were new. So my opinion on there is on that isn't actually qualitative or valid. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll admit that you're probably right, and I have no desire to watch them again. So. Yeah, I bought the Blu-ray set. I got the Blu-ray set on Amazon. I think it was prior to Thanksgiving last year for like 30 bucks for all of them. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, I think we got we got the same we got the same deal, you know. I should probably watch them. Um, yeah, it's just I it's, think, it's I just think, a time issue. I think movies 3 and 4 were pretty good. Like I remember enjoying those and I don't and the, oh. the ones but you know, mm. whatever. Angry um, right now. I would love to make Nintendo do a Legend of Link and make Zelda the protagonist. Um, says Milkmaid is a game he wants to see. I don't, yeah, I don't, we're on I'd be into so that. So there, there's some fan out out there called like the Legend of Zelda or something, or a new Legend of Zelda game that were um, two great concepts. One was a Legend of Zelda game where Zelda is the hero, like for whatever reason, and she's well, got, you can the, play as her in in Hyrule no, no, Warriors. Like, that's the can, that's the can, refrain. 
But I mean, like, she I'm has making to take, fun of that refrain. She has to take on. She has to take on the hero's. Uh, she has to wear the hero's tunic that Link does, and you pick up the sword and shield, and like, it's she's kind of doing this cross dress thing, and it looks awesome. The fan art for this is incredible. It's just a great design. Honestly, I never. When I first was hearing about Zelda games, because I had a Nintendo Power subscription from a very young age, but I never had a lot all of the games that they were talking about ever. Not by a long shot, uh, as I struggle with these controls. But I never just based on seeing drawings and stuff. Link was very androgynous, even in the eighties, and I go. never thought of Link being a in a a man. Here we go. Yeah, it's that's the thing. Here it is, though. It's called. It's Mother. called. This, this is a game I want Zelda to. to uh, I mean, not Zelda. Nintendo to make badly. It's called The Legend of Zelda: Clockwork Empire, right? And I'm gonna drop the link into it, um, in a few minutes. It was inspired by uh, the video game tropes girl, apparently. Um, Anita Sarkeesian. Yeah, I can never pronounce her name. Uh, but it's it's. But so she's just video game girl. Video. I don't. Yeah. I. I don't. You I, are. I, I don't pronounce names. I get your name wrong. Sep 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 uh, septupula. I can't do it. Uh, Anita, so Anita's series is apparently inspired by the, the tropes and that. Whether you like that or not, I don't care. This is an awesome thing. Zelda, first of all, her, her, her tunic is purple and awesome. She's an inspiring battle mage, so it like melds the like traditional Zelda magician stuff. That she's a, you know, she's a, a sorceress yeah. with, with Link's fighting abilities. Uh, Zelda, or Link is a prince. Um, it's just, I'm gonna, it's just read this entire thing at some point, guys. I'm dropping it in the chat right now. It's just it's super incredible, and it's it's a game I really thought would be a cool game to play. Um, what were you we saying about that? And there's another one out there that I can't find the link to this one. That's like the you can't next find the link to Link. I can't find the link to Link. Then it, it was it was a proposal about four years ago. Someone wanted to make the next Legend of Zelda game a uh, a Western style Mass Effect RPG that takes place in the future. Uh. I but I, I think it could work like Zelda in the future with high technology. I don't with like a, that. With a very with a uh, a fantasy no. slant, it's new. It's different. I'm, I'm sick of the same into Zelda that. game. I'm well, sick that's of the I, game. I get that, but I don't buy that. What so I don't like that concept. I'm explaining it badly, but like the pitch this like guy you, had. So what you're saying is is you're you're being well, Sean. I'm, I'm remembering something from four years ago that I read on like something or something. Um, the pitch was like like uh, the pitch was like okay. That could be developed into something really awesome. Um, Can I trick this? The yep. same work with this with this Clockwork Empire thing, you know. A uh, Kovar says it's pronounced like sardines. Sarkeesian. Sar Sarkeesians. Oh, like a sardines with like a K in it. Yeah, okay. I, I can see that. Uh, Insurgency. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Hunger Games is doing it. Hobbit did. Insurgents did it. It's pretty annoying. He's referring to when I said don't split up. Yeah. Movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Twilight I, did it as well. Twilight. Um, did it. I, I do not like that. It, it just. I think it's. I think it's a cheap marketing trip and a trick, and it's it's bad art. Mm -hmm. I, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. If you have to, yeah, it's it. It's no, it's not marketing. It's business. Well, yeah. Mar business is marketing, but you know what I mean. It's it's a business decision by the studios. You're like, all right, yeah, well, we can milk this out. Right. I, I just dislike it. Uh, let's see. Akari says he'd rather rather than playing as Zelda as a protagonist, he wants to play a game as Ganondorf. A Ganondorf game is also a really good idea. I would totally be behind that too. Uh, and I, I, the question is, would would you pitch it as his work perspective, or would you pitch it like, like we're not getting the whole story? Can you repeat that, please? Because I was attending to something that was oh. in our work chat. Playing as Ganon as uh, a character, and if, if if you played a Zelda game as Ganon, would you pitch it as uh, Ganon's work perspective of the events, or like the rest of the story that we're not hearing? I would pitch it as Ganon's work perspective. Yeah, like 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 his delusion of him being the hero, yeah. even though he's not. So so Sean, I'm seeing this now in between when you start up a level, as you go through and you're collecting these coins or these gems rather, mm -hmm. you can kind of unlock they're called power badges. And so you spend your money to buy them and one of them is make a power up the ground pound, make all the yarn balls big. Uh, then there's one for clearing a course that you can just use to skip through. I'd power up the ground pound. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I don't, yarn balls big. I mean, they would hit more, but then uh, I, you always have access to the ground pound. And you know what I'm kind of curious about with that bonus area that had the gigantic Yoshi, and there's the gigantic Yoshi amiibo. I wonder if you put the gigantic Yoshi amiibo on if you were always that size. Oh, that would be too. Overpowered. We would. We would need to ask. Uh, Is it guess editor Aaron Saporis because I know he has one. 
I wonder if it's the same. I wonder if it's the same Yoshi amiibo if it, if it counts as a different toy technically. That's a good I question. I don't know. I don't know. I'm afraid uh, to fall into the water though. Does is that or do you think those fears are founded? Oh, there's nothing wrong with falling into the so, water. Kovar was saying it's the, it's the gimme. He says you can play as Zelda and Ganondorf in Hyrule Warriors, but yep. it's not it's not really their game. Right, it's you know? that's the gimme aspect. Of it. that's, like, that, and that's fine. It's cool that you can play as them. Honestly, Zelda's I haven't played that game, but Zelda's like moves look pretty cool. I have it. I we streamed it last year, and it was it was okay. It's Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's a Dynasty Warriors game, though. It's not really you don't get. To, that's why I want to see that Clockwork Zelda game. Because, like, it's it's a new story idea. It's different. I like the idea of magic being a bigger... Like, magic hasn't been something Link has really used extensively oh, wasn't since that... maybe Zelda 2. Yeah, I was going to say, because in Zelda 2, didn't he have jump magic? Yeah, you had all kinds of magics in Zelda 2. Zelda 2, like, had a more of a magic element. And then in the third game, uh, Link to the Past, he had some magic, but not a lot of magic. So I think that could really mix things up and, and keep things fresh in a way hey, that Sean, we haven't seen. I'm going to break your heart. What? I haven't played Link to the Past. You should. It's good. It's really good. I mean, you didn't have a Super Nintendo, so I can't right. really fault you for that anymore. Man, uh, I I was ex I was expecting a me level reaction to that. No, you're you're crazy. You know what you should play is um, it's not as good as Link. Oh, to I the think past. I have a Link to the Past. It was part of the the Ambassador program. Uh, Either that or I hadn't. I I modded my PSP and I had it on PSP. It for a might while. have been. No, it wasn't. But you know what you should play. You should no, play. No, what is what is the Zelda game that was part of the the ambassador program i think yeah, it was it linked was, to the no, past it, no it wasn't it was uh it was minish cap oh right which yeah. i've never played it, it's uh i have it i've tried i've tried to play it a couple times it just keeps not grabbing me I, I'll, I'll get back to it eventually uh you should play that the... was made by capcom right yeah capcom so also did oracle of the... no did capcom do oracle did, of the ages did, and oracle of the seasons they did oracle and seasons okay uh, ages and seasons uh which was based on my favorite zelda is which is the uh um link's awakening i love link's awakening now, okay, so now that we're on the subject, and maybe you can explain it to me, what was the difference between Link's Awakening and Link's Awakening DX? Oh, just mostly color. So DX is Link's Awakening came out not early in the Game Boy cycle, but in, before they even approached color, it had been out okay. just before the Game Boy Color came out. And then DX, uh, they basically added a color, a full 16-bit color or 16-color palette to it, so it looked really good. Okay. And uh, and they, I think it's 16. Well, however many colors it is. And then they added an extra special color dungeon that you needed to be able to see color to be able to beat. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. It's it's a good, it's honestly a good remake. But it, it, you lose some fun glitches. So the original Link's Awakening uh, cartridge, if you press select as you're going between screens, it'll warp you to the opposite end of the screen, and you can really mess up the game, and it's a lot of fun. Okay, now, do you feel that that is a faithful recreation of the game, or do you think that the only version of that game that exists is the original? No, it's completely faithful. It's the exact same game with color. Okay. You know, the, the only thing that that's really different is they fixed a couple of glitches. Um, now, it also, the original game is also on there. A fun, kind of a fun fact about Game Boy Color games is they had, uh, they had two games on there. You weren't playing it in not color. If you put it in an original Game Boy that wasn't color, it would read one file and play that file uh, oh. of the game code. And if you put it on a Game Boy Color, it would play Shot. the other file of the game. Shot. Code. Well, on a motorcycle. Let me turn that thing back. I've been watching because it made me sick. I didn't see it. I see a black curtain. Well, give it a second. You're not um, on a motorcycle. You are a motorcycle. Well, that too. That is awesome. And my time's up. Time to go back. Uh, let's see about... Uh, so what I was saying, though, if you don't get to play Link to the Past, which you should, it's a really good Zelda game. Mm -hmm. Everybody uh, says it's the best. It's actually one of the best games ever made. Yeah, it's a really great game. Pull out the 3DS and play Link Between Worlds. It's not as good, but it's one of my favorite Zelda games in the last few years. It, feel, it's, it feels really good. It's now, good how was Spirit Tracks? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll take, that as a, I'll take that as an indicator. It had the, ghoul, the gameplay I liked from the, the what was the one before? Wind Waker. Was? No, no. Oh, it was, it was set in the Wind Waker universe, right? Or no, no, the, there, you're, the you're Wind missing, Waker art style. You're missing a game. There was Wind Waker. Oh, there's... Tetris Trackers. That's not what it's called. But that was a game in the Wind Waker universe, though. Yeah, but there's there's a different one. Oh, what was it called? Oh, man, this platforming segment is awesome. It's, that was uh, really, really good. Phantom Hourglass. Phantom oh. Hourglass is between those. Okay. Uh, Nathan in our in our work chat is saying <laughs> he's... The best. Yeah. yeah, you guys are talking about Zelda now? Yeah, Link to the yeah, Past. Yeah, dude, really Nate, is... jump into Twitch chat. Yeah, 
Link to the Past really is one of the greatest games ever. It's amazing. And Phantom Hourglass is what I'm talking about. Phantom Hourglass, I really liked a lot. Um, I, I liked the, 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 how you control the sword by swiping on the touchscreen. Spirit Tracks just didn't capture that magic to me. You know, it was, it, it, it wasn't the same. I didn't like Spirit Tracks as much. It had similar mechanic, didn't love it. Oh, well, all right. But I mean, it's okay. I didn't finish it is the difference. Um, but oh, I Phantom Hourglass oh. is a literal sequel to Wind Waker. So that's- Oh, funny. oh, okay. Yeah, same characters, same version of Zelda, same version of Link, same everything. Wait, is that is? And I I forget now. Did you say that was in? That's on 3DS. That's on D. That's a regular DS game. Oh, well, I should buy that and then play it on 3DS. You have no idea. Nathan has no idea how to get a Twitch chat. You you, you need an account. If you don't have one, you're kind of hosed. But yeah, you, it takes like two seconds. It takes like two seconds. But you just go to Twitch.tv/joystick, which everyone in our lovely chat is at right now. Yeah, and. Also, thank you everybody that's in chat. You guys are being great. Um, I've been able to keep like one eye on chat. I'm trying to go back and go back to what we missed, but yeah, we've people... been. I'm sorry, we've been talking amongst ourselves as opposed to talking through chat today. So sorry about that, everybody. Kovar says DX uh, was uh, a frustrating port because you couldn't skip dialogue text. I don't remember that because I only played through it once. I guess I didn't ever speed run. Um. Let's see. Yaddle says Link's Awakened had amazing bug. Let's just get large portions of the game. That was a lot of fun. I know exactly what he's talking about. Uh, let's see. Phantom Hourglass. Kovar says he thinks Phantom Hourglass sucked. I really liked Phantom Hourglass better than Spirit Tracks, which is the opposite of what he's saying. Um, but that's fine. I mean, like neither of them were great, to be honest, but I liked Phantom Hourglass more. You know what's great, Sean? About, about subjective things like opinions? Hmm. There's no such thing as a wrong one. No, there's not. You know, there's not. Except that yours are always less correct than everybody else's. I just disagree with a lot of people. <laughs> Kovar is also saying he thinks the link between the worlds is, is uh, no, is he the one that said that? Yeah, he thinks it's a better game than a Link to the Past. I don't know if I agree, but it it feels so much. You know what? I might I might be close to agreeing with you if it wasn't for. I, it was a little too easy. You know, it's a really good game though. They're both great games. You should play them both. Oh, They're not exactly sequels. Are super They're, neat. They're both really good. Sean, I really like these sponge sections a lot. I gotta turn over and see that. It's like, gonna so, make you sick because you hate this game because you hate fun and good I, things. I want I think it's just the frame rate. Like I'm, my, I'm really sensitive to to frame rate sometimes in certain things. Like I can't. I love old movies, but I can't watch them because they usually run at below 30 frames per second. Some of really old films do. You mean and below it, 24? Yeah, that's what I mean. Below 24, uh, like really old films. And if it's not at the right frame rate. I fall asleep. It makes it makes me sleepy, and I hate it because I love some of these old films, you know. Like I, I like old TV too. Like I have a hard time watching Batman, and I don't know why. Like the the, the cheesy oh, yeah. Adam West show, it makes me fall asleep, even though I want I'm interested and I want to watch it. Oh man, speaking of Batman, I've been wa I watched I picked up uh, Batman '89. I think we talked about it on the stream. No, yeah, we uh, talked about it. I think we talked about it. Was that on the stream or after the stream? I think it might have been after. Oh, it was after because there was an, there was something that happened during that that I was like, oh, I'll tell you about it afterward. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. I, I watched the the behind the scenes featurette and about all the the development hell that went they went through to get that movie made and oh, developing yeah. a script. Holy crap! I had no idea. And they're like, all right, yeah, it was once. They're like, oh gosh, so casting Michael Keaton, Mr. Mom's gonna be playing Batman. So yeah, we are getting an Adam West style movie. And then once they cast Jack Nicholson, it was like, all right, now there's something to it. This is gonna be a good movie. Yeah. It was just crazy, like how that whole ha all that happened, like the script problems they had, just a nightmare. Man, like the history of making movies, like so many of them don't get made or they get deleted, or, or uh, like Toy Story almost didn't happen because they had a whole cut of the movie that was just terrible and they threw out and started over. You know, like, there's there's all sorts of of odd stories like Man, that. If uh, I was a monster, I would say, oh, you mean the version that made it to screen? But no, I love that movie. But that would that mean would, that, that would be, be such a dick thing would, to say. That would be a great dick burn, though. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great phrasing. Problem. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. I can see that one. Um, Snookmate asked if Links Between Worlds adds up to the lives up to the hype of a Links Awakening sequel. It's a very good successor. It doesn't really feel like a sequel, like storyline wise, but it is in the same kind of world. Um, but it lives up to the hype is a really good game. If you like classic Zelda games at all, you should definitely try it. Pick up a used copy somewhere, borrow it from a friend, buy a new one, do whatever you got to do. It's a good game. 
Okay. Um, and also, I, I bought a bunch of cheap Blu-rays on Amazon because they were on sale the other week. Ooh, real oh. quick, before you go that, I'm with Kovar. He says he didn't like Burton's first Batman movie, but he likes Batman Returns. I'm pretty much on board with him. I need to... Uh, yeah, I picked up Batman Returns as well, and I haven't seen it. I've, I haven't seen it since I was a kid watching it on VHS with my parents, so I'm really yeah. curious to see how it holds up. But the first Batman is actually... There are some problems with it. Like, like Vicky Vale is just super boy crazy and kind of, like... Falls into what I would now say a stalker or a, like a stage five clinger, like real quick in that movie. It's like, oh, she spends the night, and all of a sudden, like they're make they're planning to get married. And it's like, oh wow, or at least she is. And then Bruce is like, oh, uh, reluctantly, he's like, oh yeah, okay, that works. But I yeah. like I like I like Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne a lot. He's yeah. super aloof. He's like, uh, oh yeah, and uh, get Knox a grant. Like, wait, what? Like, there goes journalistic uh, objectivity. Can't write about Bruce Wayne anymore. Yeah, I, I think a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks give those movies a harder time than they deserve. I think they're good films. I, I. Well, it is strange that Batman straight up kills people in those movies. And don't take this wrong, people in the chat. I, this is a very thing. I told you this yesterday, and you didn't care. But um, there's a lot of people don't like about me when I say this. Uh, but I'm going to explain in a minute. I actually don't like Jack Nicholson's Joker, but I. That I think that's okay because I have a feeling that Joker is one of those characters that you always love your first Joker. He's your like that's that's your favorite version, most oh, iconic version of the character. Pearl. And my first Joker is Mark Hamill in the animated series. Who oh wow! Job. Yeah. Okay. Like my first real Joker. I mean, there was there was the Joker in the animated series. That was so silly. It didn't stick with me. Not the animated series. I mean, oh the, yeah, Caesar Adam Romero. Yeah, Caesar. And Caesar Romero is great. But he's just he's what else like, is? Wasn't he? I th I'm almost positive he was in a number of Twilight Zone episodes too, because I have no idea what else he did. Caesar Romero was in a lot of stuff, but I I I just like him because he refused to shave off his mustache to play the part. He just painted over it, <laughs> which just looks really terrible. But uh, oh, oh oh I I saved myself. Yeah. Oh son of a mother! I did not save right. myself that. Oh did I? Can I do this, Sean? I think I can do this. I think I do can. It. I think I don't think it's gonna happen. I keep slipping further. Oh. You missed. Yeah. You'll see this struggle in a moment. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how Batman Returns holds up. I was talking with it, our coworker, Dan Cooper, and he says that it is a perfect film. And I'm... Returns? Yeah. Well, someone just said about it is Milkmaid says, uh, Returns is the Batman movie Burton wanted to make with no interference. And I could see that too. Like, he just, the villains in it are so good. Like, I think... Yeah. I think the uh, DeVito's Penguin is way better than Nicholson's Joker. Like, I just, I, I relate to him more. He's scarier to me. He's creepier. Catwoman does a great job. The, the whole film just comes together in a way I, I really enjoy. It's probably my favorite Batman movie. Oh, man. I screwed that up. In fact, I think it was the standard in my mind for superhero movies for a long, long time. Well, the big thing that, that happened with Batman, as they were talking about on the, the making of featurette, is how the previous big superhero movie before that was Superman. Oh, yeah. And that's, how... That's really it, different. Yeah, and it just... It was everybody was worried because of how Superman had been portrayed. And they're like, "Oh God, you know the Adam West Batman." It's what everybody was was, I would say, justifiably worried about because oh, yeah. Frank Miller is is in the documentary or the feature, and he's like, "Yeah, you know this is this is this movie is as close to my vision as really as I wanted for that." So he was talking about how yeah yeah the thing with Superman is like it was very much a kids movie. Or fan, it was super family it was a, friendly. It was a very family friendly. Yeah. Like, Chris and Christopher Reeves was like just the perfect super happy face for that. You know? Oh yeah. Oh, I, what was I was talking to our copy editor Philip about that while I was watching the movie too, and he goes, you know, I really would have liked seeing Batman Christopher Reeves versus Michael Keaton. That would or like that would have been a Batman versus Superman movie. I really would have wanted to see. Right, because then cause Batman wouldn't have been over the top, and Superman would have been so idealistic that you could believe his naivety in a way yeah. that. Like with like like Carvel is an amazing looking Superman, you know. Like, yeah. Uh, like he looks great. He looks. Oh yeah. Smart. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't really like the portrayal that the director chose. Right. And I don't think he's. I don't believe he's idealistic enough to be the naive guy that he needs to be for Batman. Well, that also comes into the. He's the, too self-aware. There's that, and it also comes. Oh, what is? Why is? Why is this happening? Uh, it also comes in with the visual style as well and the tone of the movie. Right, and that's just that's modern movie telling. You know, it was a fun movie to watch, but it's not. You know, I, I love the actor portraying it. I think I think uh, Lois Lane was not that great. I think. Oh, I like Ra or what's her name, Amy Adams. Though she's awesome. I have a huge. Oh no, crush. I like her. Oh, she's I have great. a huge I, crush on her. I like Amy Adams a lot. I just don't know if I liked her as Lois Lane. Okay. 
you know. Yeah, and I just then, oh, I, you're gonna have a hard uh, time getting me to say anything bad about Amy Adams. And then Superman's mother was too young for to be Superman's mother. Oh, no. oh, and then yeah, Russell Crowe is Kal El. I was like, oh, oh yeah. that was strange. I we're not Kal El, Jor El, yeah, Jor El, yes. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I I have I've been borrowing that movie from a friend. I've started watching it multiple times. I've just never finished it because I always fall asleep. Because I watch movies late at night, and movies calm me down and put, turn my brain off. And so at that fact, like I haven't seen the end of the movie yet. I think I woke up at one point while destruction was happening. I was like, uh, I'm going back to sleep. I'm turning the TV off. Kovar says he thinks the best Batman film was uh, Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, which I think was one of the the animated movies made by uh, the guy who made the animated series, the director DVD. Oh, uh, wasn't Mask of the Phantasm supposed to be really good too? I didn't see that. Oh yeah, that was pretty good. Um, and also it was, I think it was PG rated. Like it almost, they almost took it really far, but a couple has... of things they removed. I think they took the blood out of it or something. Right, there's there's that. And then there was... um. There was a... I don't think this went to theaters. There's a Batman Returns movie that... Oh, uh, Dark Knight I mean, Returns? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it came Returns. out recently. No, that's not what I mean. I mean Batman Beyond movie. Oh. That, that was had a really dark, like, original ending, and they had to, like, change it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ben Kachera from Polygon wrote about it recently. It was it was showed about... I think it showed the death of one of the Robins, and it was brutal. Like, it was pitch black. Like there was like I think it shows it shows the death of another character, but it's still it's really good. You know, if you don't if you haven't seen it and you you even remotely liked the animated series or Batman Beyond, watch it because it, it crosses timelines and it's really cool. Okay. Um, uh. So yeah, this has turned into the Batman and movies show. Right. We've, we we got. Oh my god, we've been talking about Batman and movies for like the last hour. Yeah, we, <laughs> we only got like three minutes left, dude. Yeah. So yeah. uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. We've appreciated you guys dealing with our movie ramblings on a video game broadcast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we're going to be back on Tuesday, and I, haven't, I think what we're going to do is we're going to stream some Wasteland 2 on Tuesday, Sean. Ooh. And on Thursday, we're actually moving things up. Uh, Thursday is when our Halo 5 Guardians giveaway extravaganza is going to be. Uh, today, in, in, in the UPS mail, I got that that Halo 5 Xbox One. And it looks pretty sweet. Um, I'm pretty into it. Like, what I'm into it the most about is the the one terabyte hard drive. Oh, that's because, nice. Because, yeah. That's that, so that, that, I think that's worth terabyte, it alone. A one terabyte hard drive came in the Steam machine that we streamed yesterday. Yeah. And it was really nice. I just don't feel like I'm running out of space and I'm installing tons and tons and tons of games. Oh, yeah, that's the problem. Is I'm running out of space on my consoles all the time. And I'm right. going... Un well, with the Xbox One, you can't upgrade it unless you use an external drive. So, I mean... Having the internal drive is, is really... Yeah, cool. having the internal drive is really, 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 really handy. And I think I'm going to die here right at the by end the, the By the way, before before we get off this topic real quick, if you all were in here for uh, yesterday's Steam Machine screen, stream, and if you weren't, you can see it in our archive on the website, um, you should be getting your hardware soon if you pre-ordered because uh, the, the controller I pre-ordered, unrelated to our review, just arrived for me this afternoon. So uh, keep your eyes in your mailbox. You should be receiving them either today or tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. So next Thursday we're going to have a Halo giveaway bonanza. Uh, we I'm I'm trying to finalize one last item, but we're gonna have at most three things to give away. At minimum two, we're going to have the Halo Five Edition Xbox One. We are also going, it, which has a I believe it has a download code for the game. It has a one terabyte hard drive. The game make or the console makes different sounds than the standard one does. There are, it's just, it's, it's pretty cool. And it has a really neat box that you could display if you wanted to. Sounds like the R2-D2 console, which made like R2-D2 noises. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like custom, custom sounds. It was really neat. And so we also have a set of Astro A40 headphones from the folks at Astro. Uh, they are the, they are Halo 5 edition uh, Astro A40s that plug into your Xbox One. So we have a ton of stuff next week, and we would like you guys to be a part of it and hopefully win some of this stuff. So the way to do that and to figure out you know, when we're streaming if you can't always just magically be on Twitch is to give us a follow. Hit that heart button underneath the player window and that will let you know when we go live and you won't have to worry about remembering what our schedule is. But if you want to know what our schedule is, you can go to the Engadget Gaming homepage and see it right there. But, yeah. So, uh, Sean, well, I, I, have you come back around on, on Yoshi's Woolly World or are you still a monster? 
I'm well, looking at it now. I'm getting nostalgic because these enemies are from the first game. A lot okay. of the ones you're seeing now, but it's it's still hard for me to watch. You know, I'm I'm I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to borrow it from a friend and see if it's it's something I can I can play. <laughs> but I am excited for next week because we will be playing that Wasteland 2 game, and I really enjoy that on the PC. And I'm yeah. I'm super excited to see how it comes out on consoles. Yeah, yeah, because I have a PS4 code, and I will be downloading that, and we'll be playing that next week. Also, it's kind of interesting because we have two. It used to be a regular thing. It was like, oh, post-apocalyptic games all over the place. But now, well, we have Fallout 4 coming out this fall. Pretty soon, actually. Yeah. Wow, this year's going back really quickly. And we also have Wasteland 2. And wasn't Wasteland pretty heavily inspired by the original Fallout games? Actually, the original Fallout games were created by the creator of the original Wasteland game. Oh, well. So then. Brian Fargo made Wasteland, which was a very, sim very, very simple-looking game. And a couple years later, he made Fallout, uh, which was basically the same kind of idea. Uh, except for it was a lot better. Then he made Fallout 2, and then I think I think he was involved in tactics, and then he lost the license. Okay. And then he came back and said, look, I still want to make a game in this world, but I, I want to make it like the old games. So he made a sequel to Wasteland, and it's and it feels a lot like it feels a lot like uh, the original Fallout games and Fallout tactics. It's a great, great... I really enjoy it. If you guys try it out, if you can. If, if, and I'm just really excited to see how it plays on console, because I could never play the original Fallout games on console. That's your own fault. Oh, 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 never they, mind. I'm sorry. They, yeah. they didn't exist on it. They, sorry, they, they, I, I'm, I misunderstood you and right. was prematurely calling you a monster, even no, though, no. Sean, you're a monster. I'll make up for it there. No, the the, uh, the original games were these point-and-click things. They just didn't translate to sitting on the couch, and that was fine. I enjoyed them plenty on my desk in front of the computer, but sometimes you want to chill. And yeah, you sometimes can. you want a PC and chill. Yeah, you want a <laughs> PC and chill. <laughs> Good Lord. VHS and chill, guys. This has been Engadget Playdate. It has been. And I don't you click know. that hard button, you can Engadget Playdate and chill with us on Tuesday for Wasteland 2. You might not be able to participate in chat if that's happening, but we understand. Just let us know what's going down. We'll provide some background noise and some music. And made by our mouths. Oh. Mouths. Our mouths. Bow Mouth. chicka wow wow. Okay, that's not. Yep, good. yep, and this is this is where I leave you, everybody. Have an excellent weekend. Thank you for joining us all week long. Uh, I am Timothy J. Seppla, Engadget I'm, Associate Editor. I'm Sean Buckley, also an Engadget Associate Editor. And according to Yaddle, I am bad at video gaming. And with that note, peace! Good night.